is Sports Radio 560 WQAM Miami Fort Lauderdale. No. Sports Radio 560 WQAM Miami Fort Lauderdale presents the Neil Rogers Show. Oh, right. To talk to Neil, call 5670560 toll free for Dayton Broward or pound 560 on your cell phone. The opinions of Neil, his guests, callers, or anyone else on the show do not necessarily reflect those of WQAM, Beasley Read Acquisitions, or the Beasley Broadcast Group. Now, Neil Rogers on Sports Radio 560 QAM. Hey, Sam, I'll go away. It's not that we don't like you, but uh, we don't. My God, is that thing real? See you, Sam. Not soon, hopefully. There he was, just a walking on the sea, singing. Do I did it, did it, dum did it, oh. Oy. He's a man from the land of Galilee, singing. Do I did it, did it, dum did it, oh. Yeah. He's good, he's good, divine, divine. He's good, divine. Changes water into wine. The next thing I knew, he had a lame man on his feet singing. Do I did it, did it, dum did it, do. The blind are gonna see and the dumb are gonna speak singing. Do I did it, did it, dum did it, do. He walked on, walked on through my door, my door. Walked on through my door, then he cured a leper source. Whoa, whoa. Some say he's the son of God. Yes. Yes, they do, but there's other people think it's so odd. Now he's the reason that we have an Easter Day singing. Do I did it, did it, dumb did it, do. Oy. And he's the reason that all the Christians pray singing. Do I did it, did it, dumb did it, do. They praise him, praise him, kneel down, kneel down, praise him and kneel down. The man who wore a thorny crown. Kneel, God. Do I did it, did it. Dum did it do. Do I did it, did it, dum did it do. Do I did it, did it, dum, he's a Jew. Do I did it, did it, dum, he's a Jew. Do I did it, did it, dum, he's a Jew. Do I did it, did it, he's a Jew. Nothing on the ice. Nothing on the ice. Nothing on the ice. Nothing on the ice. All right. Well, Hunter, he has Back to Kovalev. And he's a bit of a fight. Two on four. Good call. Mahana's going to the line. Drop. Sundin Thomas. Yep. All right, we'll take it. We'll take it any way we can get it. Four minutes after 10 at 560 WQM. There'll be a lot of people bellyaching. There's nothing worse than crybabies. You know, that state of Pennsylvania, they got one thing in common on the east end, on the west end. A lot of crybabies there in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. Wah, too bad. So anyway, so George had his uh, first appearance yesterday. I think we're going to spend a lot of time on this. Maybe we should have a contest. Too bad we don't have, like, random prizes to give away on this cheap-ass outfit. Maybe we should have a contest to see if anybody can guess how many people showed up at George's appearance Saturday at uh, the Buick joint down there in the Homestead. Let me give you a clue. Oh! Yeah, that's the clue. Not two, not one, but oh! whatever is right before one. And, of course, you know, this is like sabotage. Sales holes, I don't want to mention no names. I'll give you a clue which salesperson was behind it. I can't mention his name for obvious reasons. But uh, what kind of jackass sends one of our people down there to Homestead? Do you think we really have anybody listening in Homestead? We used to before the uh, whole town, uh, you know, disappeared in the hurricane, which was very sad. But um, is there anybody alive left in Homestead? No. In fact, that dealer, they said last time they had a customer was before a customer was a baby, something like that. That's what they said. Before the base shut down. They were selling buggies back then, I think. So George was down there for two hours, and uh, him and uh, what's his name? The nephew. No, but what's Oh, Pablo name? Pelota. Pablo Pe- Pablo. The real star. The real Pablo draw. Pablo Pelota. And even he couldn't draw anybody to Homestead. Oh! <laughs> now, if 
you would have been smart and had Ricky Martin, what? What are you laughing about? Do you think Ricky Martin would have drawn in Homestead? No. Is there anybody alive? No. Huh? How about uh, Britney Spears? No. Backdoor Boys? No. Anybody? Uh, Ed Sullivan, if they brought his body back? No. Pembroke Pines, hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. I'll tell you, my heart goes out to Scotty Bowman and those Red Wings. What a hell of a team. What do you mean your heart goes out to them? Well, you usually say that as condolence. What do you mean your heart goes out to them? My hat, my hat. Oh, your hat goes off to them. Or my, anyway. Yeah, you, maybe your rectum. <laughs> yeah, just like Brian Murray said to me, oh, it's too bad about that Stevie Eiserman. He's too small. He'll never be a great player. Nice going, BM. Oh! Who, by the way, beat his brother in that stupid, meaningless uh, Canada-U.S. game yesterday. So you pretty much think they're going to sweep the uh, avalanche? Do I think they're going to sweep the Avalanche? The Avalanche suck. Yes. Who's going to give them competition? Well, it's not going to be the Avalanche. I guess it's going to be Dallas, ain't it? Yeah, I think And so. by the way, Dallas is pretty lucky to be getting by St. Louis. Uh, man, they're lucky Grant Fuhrer played such a crappy game in goal the other night. The Fuhrer is finished. He is uh, grotesque. He might as well go out. Okay, have a great day, sir. So we got a hockey call right off the bat. Let's hear it, man. See? The newspaper here, you look at the sports section, is loaded with basketball crap. I'm telling you, basketball is not for white people. That's what Lenny Martez just said when he came in here. He's got his Knicks jersey on. He's a Schwarzer from Puerto Rico. He's a big Knicks fan. He's a hockey fan. Well, you know, nobody's perfect. I don't know how he got that hockey stuff. What? That's what he said. He said he grew up on the air. Maybe he said he threw up on the NHL, something like that. I thought he said grew up on it. It's for the NBA. It's for Schwarzers. That's what he said. And these um, clowns we got in the morning and the newspaper, bah, 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 bah. nobody really cares except those plastic idiots with their cell phones at the arenas all around the country, including the Miami arena, which they needed a new arena there like they need a hole in the head. Here's a mobile in Pompano. Hello. Yeah, how you doing, Neil? Great. Um, I'm sure with your hockey knowledge, you'll agree with me, but they've got to keep all those millions in Canada watching the NHL because that's the only thing going on right now. And uh, that non-call in that game last night, and I guarantee you, Neil, I know you'll agree with me, that was the worst non-call I've seen in a crucial situation for the Penguins. And no, I will, not agree. I will not agree with you on that at all. That is terrible. I've seen no, it. I was a, 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 skated. Sir, do you want, a, do you want a response or what? Go ahead, go ahead, Neil. It was a bad non-call, but I've seen many, many worse, even just in this year's playoffs already, and we're only in the second round. A friend of mine was watching the game with me. He says they ain't going to let Toronto get eliminated. They're going to do anything they can to get eliminated. That's the most ridiculous. You know something? Do you have any idea what sour grapes that sounds like? That's the most know, ridiculous know, thing I've ever heard in my hey, life. Toronto skated well. They played a great game. They deserved but if, they, if, if that was the case, then how come in a Philadelphia game, there in the last game, they had five penalties in a row against the Leafs? You sound like Bobby Clark now. And, uh, and uh, it's not five. me. What? Huh. Hey, that's absolutely unacceptable. It's not me. What, what's unacceptable? I didn't say that. The other guy said that. Yeah, well, tell him, tell him to blow it out of his ass. Tell him he's a crybaby, okay? Tell him to have a goddamn crybaby party for him and all the other cry. Let's cry for all those sore losers out there. And let me say it again. No matter what team you root for, if you get the benefit of a crappy call or a non-call, you'll say, okay, thank you, we'll take it, because all teams get a lot of other bad calls against them. So we'll take it, thank you. Yeah, it was a bad non-call. But all those Penguin fans, guess what? I hate to break the news to you. The score was still 3-2 Toronto at the time that that uh, took place. Hate to break the news to you, okay? And they weren't going to beat Cujo again there last night. It wasn't going to happen. I don't give a crap what the hell they say. Unless they knocked him in the net again like they did on Titoff School. Unless they did that. Wah! All these crybabies, okay? They can't handle it that the Mighty Maple Leaves won a game last night. I think the secret was Bob Cole was out sick, didn't do the game last night. Chris Cuthbert did it on CBC. And by the way, Chris Cuthbert and Harry Neal of the CBC, they both said it was a terrible non-call. How do you like that? They both admitted that it was grotesque and unbelievable, but uh, we'll take it. Nine minutes after ten. By the way, 60 minutes we'll be talking about all those uh, Jesuit priests out there. I've been telling you for years. There's no fact in, in the church. If you need new appliances or electronic equipment and your wallet keeps saying, No. Just go into one of Appliance TV Depot's three locations, and you'll be astonished. You'll be shocked. You'll be amazed at how low the prices really are. In the price. Nobody repulses you more. I met a priest when I was 11. All right. He said he would save my soul. Father O'Toole, God. But we made a detour. On the way to heaven 
And into his bedroom we did take a stroll. Oh! He was standing in his underwear. Told me to bend over and say a prayer. Wrecked him. Pulled up his robe and went back, thank you, ma'am. I got molested by the preacher man behind the rectory. The next day, I felt like a sinner, then I showed up to get communion, but on my tongue, that was in a wafer, and it was that wine a dripping off my chin. Squirt, squirt. Well, he was standing in his underwear. Oh. Told me to bend over and say a prayer. Pulled up his rope and went back, thank you, ma'am. I got molested by the preacher man behind the rectory. All right. Yeah, he was standing in his underwear. Told me to bend over and say a prayer. Pulled up his rope and went back, thank you, ma'am. I got molested by the preacher man behind the rectory. Wrecked him? Hell, it damn near killed him. Okay, so we'll get into that 60 minutes piece in just a second. But first, we got a mobile. What was that? I think it was Eddie, but. But it was so it was muffled you couldn't even tell, yeah. It wasn't even a real call from Homestead. What did I tell you? And on a bad cell phone that you really couldn't tell, but uh, why put it on the air? See, there's nobody down there in Homestead. Don't feel so bad. I know you feel really, really... George is really upset about it, and uh, he's sniffling more than those Penguin fans after that bad non-call last night and that Maple Leaf win 4-2 to two at the Air Canada Center. Come on, there's got to be somebody listening at Homestead right now. Come on, before we do anything else on the show, let's lay, let's lay the gauntlet down there, the challenge. This could kill a couple hours. <laughs> huh? You don't believe that anybody's going to call, do you? You think that everybody is going, all right... Homestead line, hello. Hello? Yes, sir. How are you, Neil? Good. Are you in Homestead? Yes, sir, I am. All right. There you go. That didn't take long. I want to tell you how bad I feel. Yeah. I feel so bad. How bad? I feel so bad that I I could walk outside and and jump in the pool. I don't know. I and blow your brains out. At 10 till 3, uh, what, Saturday, Yeah. we drove by Armstrong on motorcycles. The place looked like a ghost town. It was. It was buttoned up. The van was sitting out front, closed, all windows up, doors closed. Yeah. Not a soul inside. Well, that's probably because the nephew was smoking dope inside. That could be. But And my wife didn't, you know, I said, look, we got to go by and see George. So we drove. We, my so, son, so in other words, you and your wife could have been the ones that would have made it a smashing success. And my son and his girlfriend, the four of us could have yeah, made it four. a smashing success. Four! Here's a foursome. A foursome on motorcycles. Is his girlfriend hot? Yeah, she's pretty hot. Well, see, George now really feels bad. Well, I feel bad. I feel terrible. Yeah. Because I want to go see George. But when I go by there at 10 to 3, I'm looking around. I'm like, Jesus. Well, what time were you there? It's 1 to 3. Oh, he was there right up till 3. He would have been there for In fact, that would have turned a dismal failure into a smashing success. I feel terrible. Jesus Christ, man. I apologize man. humbly, humbly to George. Does he accept the apology? No. Oh, come on. Oh, come Don't on, be George. a hard ass, George. No. Now he right. won't accept it. He's pissed. No, we tried. Four of you. Four of us, yes. Well, where were you going? Uh, we're going home. We've been down the keys. Yeah. And uh, it's, I I feel terrible. I was I was the one. The so one in other words, you weren't going like any place special. Uh, you just were going home. Yeah. But you couldn't spare the five or ten minutes that would have made George feel better. I apologize, home. We yeah. had free flowers. You had what? Free flowers. Oh, and I know what really kept him away was probably that Pablo Pelota. I forgot about him. Yeah. Thank God. Okay. Well. I again. I okay. Do we accept it? No. No, we don't accept it. Get out of here. That's bad. See, you were almost, you were on the verge of greatness. You almost had, what? You almost had a foursome there, including this guy's son and his uh, hot uh, girlfriend, or whatever it was, whatever they said. Some chick they picked up on the street somewhere down in the Keys. I don't know with a thumb out. I don't know what it was all about, but they didn't show up, God damn it. No. Christ. That's this audience for you, man. They just don't care enough to send their very no. damn best. Just like these calls here this morning. You watch. It's Monday again. Here's Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. I called about the isolated incident. 60 yes. minutes. I yeah. just want to make sure you saw it. Did you see the whole thing? Yes. A lot of chicken. Hockey. I even had my tape going on the uh, the hockey game, just because I had seen the promos all day long. 
to make sure I didn't miss that. I told my dad last night he missed it. He never misses 60 minutes. I said, oh, crap, you missed the best one. Neil, <laughs> Neil will be going on tomorrow. Well, 60 Minutes seems to be one of the only shows in America that uh, every now and then like uh, steps into this it, uh Yep. perverted world of uh, faggot in the priesthood. They didn't try to cover it up too much, though, did they? They wanted him to sign all these papers and they everything else. They wanted to else. pay him ten grand, and then they said, yep. "Well," and then they got the lawyer from Notre Dame there. How do you like this asshole? Well, uh, if he didn't, if he didn't want to, uh, if he didn't like what was going on, he should have just left. He had no business exposing it, so to speak. Somebody Threaten was exposing suing something. them. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, I just called. Oh, how did you? Like? And by the way, I must say, a pretty interesting selection of cards that they were sending him in the mail. Oh yeah. Yep. All right, Neil. Okay, have a great day. And just don't forget one thing, sir, no matter what you do. There's no fact in, in the church. Yeah, in case you missed the 60 Minutes piece, which obviously most of you did, most of you ostriches out there with your heads buried in the sand. And once again, they show the same scenes in the church, and all these idiots, these lemmings, these imbeciles, go in there opening their mouths wide while they're sticking the wafer in there, sticking out their tongue. Maybe maybe it's me. Maybe it's an old fag like me. But when I see a guy walk into a place and he opens his mouth and sticks his tongue out at another guy and the other guy sticks something in his mouth, uh, there's a word for that, okay? Don't forget one of them's on his knees. Yeah, and why, yeah, that's right. And the one guy's on his knees. Open wide. You know what they call that? That's a gay club, you moron. That's what they call it, man. These imbeciles, these idiots. And see, they can't admit now at this late stage in their lives, even if they're young people out there and they've been brainwashed and brought up that, that their priests are all a bunch of fags, which there's nothing wrong with being a fag, unless, of course, you're a hypocrite, and unless, of course, you're busy uh, pretending to be something that you're not, which is the American effing way most of the time. That's what this country is obsessed with, most people pretending to be something that they're not. Like Ricky Martin. Oh, I'm sorry. Leave him alone. He's paid his dues, and he, uh, you know... Huh? <laughs> he probably went. He probably uh, was put through the ringer, so to speak. They taught him the ropes and how to skip, and they butched him up a little bit. And I emphasize just a little bit. Gave him like a fourth makeover. He's bigger than Mary Tyler Moore and the six million dollar man. Oh. Right. Gigantic article about Ricky Martin in the paper there, and pictures from like Menudo and all this other crap. Didn't we hear that Menudo? Most of the kids in that group were all molested. Hadn't we heard that just a few months ago? But not Ricky Martin, huh? No. No, thank God for that. Jesus, God. That's all we need to be hearing about is that night. And isn't he Puerto Rican? That means he's probably Catholic. So, you know, I mean, between between the rock group and the uh, church, they got him coming and going, so to speak. God dang. So anyway, here's this guy. And by the way, if you did see the whole piece on 60 Minutes last night, you'll notice that this Jesuit priest wannabe, this uh, seminarian, whatever the hell he was, he was a homosexual, admitted, but he was celibate. Aren't we all celibate? Yes. Of course. We don't want to get Anita pissed off again and Alvin Dark, get them all started up again. And Dr. Kennedy, right? Yes. Right. But anyway, so he's in a priesthood, and the old the old lech that he's driving to the airport here and there, he's, he's like his chauffeur, his uh, gopher. And he says, well, you know, uh, we're going to have to get the sexual part of this thing straightened out. Straightened out just a little play on words. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. We're going to have to get it straightened out. And that was only the beginning, as Chicago would say if they were here to sing it. Only the beginning. And then he started getting these uh, cards, these greeting cards in the mail, these nude uh, porno uh, hot young guys with their, and you know, 60 Minutes, since this is America, they had to put like little stickers over the penises on those cards. Damn it. Yeah, they had to put like a little, uh, little thing and, uh, and big things in some cases over the uh, penises on those cards because God forbid that we show, should show you that the priest, and then he started getting cards from the other uh, Jesuits there in the seminal place. What have I been telling you? Why do you think they call it rectumry and why is it a seminal place? And so this guy finally got pissed off, and he decides to sue. And it's, see, when it's convenient for the religionist, oh, no, you can't sue us because then the government gets sticking their nose into our affairs. It separates the church and state. we got the First Amendment to protect us. So when it comes to their tax-exempt status or the fact that there's all this sexual uh, harassment going on, then, oh, they stand by separation of church and state. But when it comes to sticking their nose and to trying to tell everybody else what to do, including the government and, you know, all the, uh, the uh, right to life maniacs and every other goddamn issue that they're all whipped up to a frenzy about, then all of a sudden there's no more separation of church and state. Then they stick, they stick it right in there in their nose, too. 
I'd like to know how one self-respecting Catholic could watch that piece again last night. I mean, this is just another one. This is no isolated episode. This is going on all the time. I've been asking for 23 years on a year here in this town. You name me one straight priest. And if I ever had an answer, no, never. And you'll notice they wouldn't allow. In fact, I felt like uh, I was a part of this thing last night because uh, all those years that I was on the air on WS News doing a serious talk, and I had ministers on and rabbis on, every denomination, the wackos on, Holy Joe, all those uh, glam. But it was only the Catholic Church wouldn't allow any of their people to come on the air. See, they, they just ignore you. They just uh, stonewall it, if I can use that term just like they were doing last night. Remember the same thing? Oh, well, this one wouldn't respond to our request for an interview, and the church wouldn't let this one speak, and yada, yada. Of course they don't, because silence is what it's all about. That's their, that's their theme song in the church is silence is golden. And the old queens are olden. They're holding it. I mean, this is the biggest... This is the biggest gay club in the world is the Catholic Church, and I can't, I can't seem to convince anybody. And they keep showing these segments on there. Every few months, somebody butchers up and gets the balls to put it on there for you and show you what's going on. And then these idiots go out there, and they go to these priests. They sit there in a confessional, and the priests are getting their rocks off. <laughs> That's right. Oh, I thought maybe there was like a uh, – uh, maybe we're having a uh, tornado outside again, like the ones in Oklahoma. Maybe those were those thumping sounds I heard. In the confessional next to me. Right, that's it. Nothing like being just a little bit naive. Who's being naive now, Kay? That's right. They just don't want to deal with it. They don't want to accept it because that's like an admission that their whole life has been a lie, that somebody lied to them. If they lied to you about Santa Claus, they lied to you about Father O'Toole also, okay? Is that okay? No. I didn't think so. 26 past 10 at 560 WQAM. The glory holes. He started out a regular guy who joined the rectory and made the ultimate sacrifice, embracing celebrity. Father O'Toole. Oh! Amen! Father O'Toole. Uh -huh. Father O'Toole. Okay, Father as time went by, his earthly needs compromised his choice. He found a way to get relief by altering young boys. Oh! Father O'Toole. Amen. Bum, holy fool. Father O'Toole, altering boys. Amen. He was happy and gay till he got caught. By some saddle sale, then the Vatican paid everyone off, and he didn't have to go to jail. Father O'Toole, amen. Oh, bum, holy fool. Uh, Father O'Toole, altering holy day. They sent him to a priest retreat where they genuflect and pray. If it was you or it was me, they'd lock us up and throw the keys away. Father O'Toole, amen. All right. Bum, holy fool. Uh -huh. Father O'Toole, ultimate noise, amen. Father O'Toole, amen. Yes. Bum, holy fool. Uh -huh. Bum, bum. I want to hear from every uh, person that's been molested out there by the priests and nuns, okay? Everybody that's been spanked by the nuns, everybody that's been uh, molested by the priests and been invited to participate in these circle jerks or whatever they were talking about last night on 60 Minutes. I mean, what? how long do they think they can keep covering this up, okay? There is, I mean, made-for-TV movies all over the goddamn world. They're, like, pointing the finger at it. And how about those uh, the uh, singing the Swiss Guard there? Remember that? That scandal, huh? I almost said the singing nun. <laughs> Whatever the hell they were. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on a mobile one line. Look at the reaction here today, huh? The same old, you know, there's no fact in, in the yeah, church. Same old crap. They're in denial with Cleopatra. Here's a mobile in Cutler Ridge. Hello. Hey, how you doing, man? Okay, sir. Unfortunately, I did, just caught the tail end of that. Uh, yes, yeah, and yeah. Report. But, uh, yeah, it is. I do know a person, by the way. This guy is 24 years old. He'll be ordained in the next two months. Yes. 
this guy was the, was the biggest party animal. He went to U of F. This guy was would do everything up and down, up and down the book, and all of a sudden he's gonna be a priest. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I did catch Ricky Martin. I'm even persuaded to go. I get regal up. Five six seven oh five sixty pound for the less said the better. Pound five sixty on the mobile one line. See, that's what they want to talk about is Ricky Martin, not the fact that we got this corrupt institution. The all, you know, it's, it's just unbelievable. Nothing can move these bastards off the dime. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on a mobile one line. Here's Margate. Hello. Hi Neil, how you doing? Okay, sir. I like to say I'm a long time listener, first time caller, and I love your show. Uh huh. I yeah, love your show, and um, keep up the great work. And can I make a request? Five, okay, so we got no calls here this morning. This is going to be just like last Thursday all over again. Friday we did pretty damn good. Maybe just Fridays I'll come in from now on. Oh, that's not good because I like those three-day weekends. The cats got their tongues again here today, here in South Florida, the land of the walking dead. 5670560, five, oh, five, pound 560 on the uh, mobile one line. Meantime, they're having this big summit, Entertainment Industries, at the center of the youth summit. Here's Jack Valenti again, who never saw a violent movie he didn't like. And I'm watching MTV, all this stuff, all these videos we've been talking about the last couple of days. And I'm watching MTV, and they got that celebrity, uh, what do they call it? Deathmatch. Several celebrity deathmatch. That's the only show about 80 times a day with Pat Sajak and uh, Alex Trebek getting squashed and the blood splurting all over the place. And one of the uh, make-believe characters on there says, oh, yeah, MTV, more television violence. <laughs> yeah. Is it funny? No. Not even remotely, but, hey, you know. Because let's face it, as opposed to individual responsibility, it's a lot easier to have these summits and finding uh, scapegoats. Because that's what we do best in this country is find scapegoats, right? Uh -huh. That's right. It's always somebody else's fault. Nobody takes responsibility. Parents don't take responsibility. Kids don't take responsibility. So why the hell should anybody else? Let's find the scapegoats. Let's start pointing fingers and start blaming each other. And then we can all get a bunch of guns and go out and get pissed off and shoot each other. It was your fault. God damn it. No, it was yours. All right. Won't do it again. Here's a mobile in Coral Springs. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, can you hear me? I hear you. Do you hear me? Yeah, Neil, listen. I, I think you're way out of the way, man. It's all that you see on the TV yesterday. To my view, I think it's propaganda, man. It's not really Apple. Yeah, it's not really Apple. Shorties. Listen, listen, man. You have different shorts. And when you start talking about like this, that is why we have problem with the kids today. See what happened in Oklahoma, you know? That's not right, man, you know? Yeah, that's why we had the tornadoes in Oklahoma, because I'm speaking whatever I'm saying. Why don't you learn to speak English, okay, my banana boat friend, whatever the hell you're talking about? Do you understand what he was saying? No. Something about was Oklahoma. That? I have no idea. Here's a mobile in LaBelle. Hello. Hey. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. All right, 28-year-old atheist. Catholic school for 13 years. Yes. My brother went to Catholic school, too, all his life. What a bunch of crap. Freaks do more ass grabbing than half the women I've ever met in strip clubs. Right. It's ridiculous. I don't understand why these people can't open their goddamn eyes. Like you said, Ziggy's your bunny for grown ups. Exactly. I mean, what else? I mean, everything. And the boogie man. Yeah, and I, you know, my parents used to always get pissed off at me because I, you know, it wasn't bad enough. I was forced to go to church two, three, four times a, a friggin' week. And you know, my brother and I used to get together all the time after school. I was like, what the hell are we doing here? It's because mom and dad insisted it was a better education. And meanwhile, when I got kicked out of school, I got the same goddamn books at public school that I did when I went to Catholic school. All right. Just less ass grabbing, that's all. A little, little lot less ass grabbing. There you go. Yeah. Well, yeah, from, you know, from the men anyway. <laughs> okay. God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Zygazunt. Whatever that means. Five six seven oh five sixty. Yeah, let's bring it out of the closet here today and lay it right out of the table. And whatever that first guy said there before, whatever. Ba, 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 what was he talking about? Anybody know? Yeah, I'm not. Well, uh, send us a letter and explain it to us, because I sure as hell couldn't figure it out. Here's a Hallandale. Hello. Hey Neil. Yes sir. It's been a long time. Has there ever been any good Catholics, Neil? What does that mean? What does that? Well, have I'm to do? asking what you. What does that have to do with what we're talking about? I'm asking you. Is there, yes, there, good has there ever been any Catholics? good? Yes, there have been good. What does that have to do with what we're talking about? Is that your way of obfuscating what we're talking about? Well, when are you going to talk about the good Catholics? No, we're not talking about good anything. We're talking about a scandal. Why can't you talk about it? I can talk about well, it. Well, I don't hear you talk about it. What do you have Catholics? to? What do you have to say about it? Have you ever heard of Max? What do you? Know? Okay. See, he won't respond. It's that same old game again. Pop, 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 you know, with the blinders on. Don't confuse me with the facts. We're not saying all Catholics are bad, all Jews are bad. What we're saying is that religions are corrupt and full of crap, and yours is one of the worst. 
The biggest closet in the world is the Catholic Church, but don't confuse this guy with the facts, okay? Don't respond to what we're talking about. And it's not something Neil Rogers is making up on a radio. There it was on 60 Minutes last night. And they've had several of these pieces on, if you have pardon that expression, over the years. Like the one priest that says, oh, it was okay that he was having sex with that young girl because there was no passion involved. Remember that one? And Mike Wallace and the camera crew kept following him down that mountain road there or wherever the hell they were in some banana boat place. And he kept, they kept running away and running away, and they're following him around. Just keep running. Just keep covering up like a little dog. You know, dog goes out in the yard and does a number. And then a walk, like my little dog, goes about 10 yards away and then kicks up its hind legs like it's trying to cover up its, yeah. But guess what? When you go out there and take a closer look, there's still a pile of right there, right in front of your puss. But you can't deal with it, can you, sir? All these religionists, man, just like there's a, an, our letter, the editor of the day in the Sun Sentinel. Killer's religion irrelevant, says Bert and Selma Glass in Coconut Creek. We were appalled at the necessity of your paper to emphasize several times that one of the teenage killers was of Jewish heritage and celebrated the Jewish holidays, etc. We don't ever recall reading about the importance or even the mention of the killer's religion and what holidays he observed before he slaughtered innocent people. Are you trying to imply something? Shame on you. Our opinion of your newspaper is extremely diminished, so they say. Of course, the fact that it was on Hitler's birthday that these two scumbags decided to go in there and kill a bunch of people, and the fact that they were like neo-Nazis and had the swastikas on their website, uh, maybe that might make it relevant, do you think? Yes. Yeah. Burton Selma Glass, who evidently can't see through the goddamn glass. Maybe it's half empty, or maybe it's half, who knows what it is, half full of crap. All these uptight people, oh, don't go pick it on my uh, fairy tales, goddammit. Seems to me that it's highly relevant. But then what do I know? Notice how hostile they get? They're all hostile. They, and, and they can't just respond to what I'm talking about. They have to get all bent out of shape. That, that's a good way to cover it up. Like I said, the little dog's out there kicking its legs up in the air. Oh, <coughs> pile is still there. Big, smelly pile. Just like what you got in your church. A big, smelly pile. <coughs> 20 till 11 at 560 WQM. You want to get back in, in the church? Hi there, boys and girls. Today, we've got a very extra special friend stopping by to show us all about something really special. Oh, I hear him at the door right now. Come on in, Mr. McMahon. <laughs> How are you, laddie? Hey, brought by something I wanted to show you. Ooh, ooh, I wonder what it, it is. is. It looks like, looks like a, an octopus with a kilt on. <laughs> it's me bag, boy. Ooh, your bag? Hey. Ooh, what? Can I touch it? Sure, go ahead. Ooh, ooh. It's Run your hands there. That's, it. that's soft. Hey, like really? velvet. Hey. Oh, oh, what, what's this right here? That is my blowpipe. You, what What do you do with the blowpipe? You blow on it, lad. You blow, you, you blow on hey, it? Hey, you put your mouth around it and you blow. Oh, can, can I do that? Hey, would you like to blow my pipe, lad? Oh, can I? Sure, go ahead. Oh, okay. Come on, lad. You, you got to put your mouth around it, lad. Don't oh. be afraid; it's okay. not going to break. Like, like this? Hey, that's a boy. Oh. Stick it all the way down your throat. It's getting bigger. Hey, that oh. means you're doing it right. Oh. What, what's this over here? That's me chanter. What's, what do I do with that? What you do with that, lad? Is you put your both hands on it, you cover the hole, and you run your hands up and down the shaft real quick. Ooh, that's hey, like that? hey, run your hands Ooh. up and down it there. Now what you wanna do, laddie? is you want to blow on the pipe. You want to squeeze the bag nice and gentle. And then you want to run your hands up and down the shaft real quick. Like, okay. All I'm together, like all at the same time. Okay, here, here we go. Uh, good, laddie. Hey, that's good, lad. Sure. Uh, hey, good, laddie. Uh, Keep blowing. Blow harder, laddie. Harder. Squeeze the bag. Squeeze more. Yes. Run your hands up and down the shaft. Faster! Run your hands up and down, faster! Slow! Slow! Oh! You've been doing your play, I'm a Yes. Do that again. After the catch me, breath, maybe. 1046 at 560 WQM. Hank Goldberg from Shula State, 2 at 2 o'clock. Jim Mandich at 6. We got the Marlins and the Padres. The Red Hot Marlins actually won a series. Any interest? No. That's at 930 tonight. Any interest? No. So anyway, let me tell you what the normal is, okay? Normal is somebody that wants a sex life. Whether it's heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, celibacy, the whole concept of celibacy is sick, it's abnormal, it's unacceptable, it's ridiculous. 
And, of course, it's a way of saying, well, you see, we're spiritual. We're not sexual. We're not like uh, of the flesh. We're not sucked into that, pardon that expression, into that whole business with the flesh. We're, like, better than you are. We're holier than you are. So, therefore, we can, like, uh, you know, tell you who's naughty and nice and what to do and where to stick it, et cetera, even though we don't know anything about it, allegedly. Heterosexual couples going to a priest for marriage counseling? I mean, are you kidding me? You have to be out of your mind. <laughs> Like that manual the guy sent us last year. Remember it said don't do it manually or any other way. That manual. I think he used to do the lawn work manual. I mean, just unbelievable. From this twisted closet. That's what they ought to call it. You remember that thing, the twisted cross? They ought to call this the twisted closet is what it is. And that guy before, I, I love people like that. I get sexual excitement from people like him. The one that started, are there any good Catholics that are, you know, screaming and yelling? Try to cover it up. Cover up your tracks, man. You're, it's not working. It's not working. You can't cover it up. You can scream loud and uh, carry on. And all it shows me is that you can't deal with the truth. And it would bother me, too, if my whole life had been invested in, uh, and then I find, uh, in, in believing in something this corrupt and this bankrupt, and it turned out to be totally bogus like those infomercials they have on Sunday morning. Man, oh man, I'm telling you, you want to lose some weight? I'll just sit in front of your TV set, kill some good time, make sure you're not eating anything while you're watching. They got the fat burners, baby. They got 8 million different products that'll burn up all that fat. Of course, we know that dietary fat doesn't make you fat, but don't confuse them with the facts. They want your goddamn money, just like the church. I think it's appropriate they did infomercials around here on Sunday morning right around and in between and sometimes in the middle of those uh, church programs. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. I want to talk about this Jenny Jones case that uh, apparently she lost and uh, she has to pay whoever $25 million. I think that's disgusting. I think that's America. Once again. Yeah, it's lawyers is what it is. Once again, we are, as Americans, we put the blame on somebody else. Right. I've talked to a few of my friends. They all think that Jenny Jones was, you know, in the wrong. And this guy shot the guy three days later. So right. how is Jenny, Jenny Jones didn't shoot the gun? I agree with you. You know, and it's in, in addition, to which, all in addition to which, one of the things that they don't talk about in the straight press, by the way, is that these two guys had had sex. They don't well, want to talk about that. I didn't even know that. Well, there you go. They had, they had had an affair. They had sex. And then the one guy decided three days later it was bad for his, ima his image or whatever and uh, <laughs> decided to blow his uh, crap away. It's just, I mean, one day we all have to stop and blame everybody else right. and start blaming the people who are shooting each other. That's and the American fucking way. I guess it is. Yeah. Thanks, Neil. Okay. I'll take part of that $25 million, by the way. Ridiculous. Asinine. I mean, no matter how grotesque the shows are, no matter Jerry Springer, no matter how uh, people have got to start taking responsibility for their own actions. That, that, you, know, you know, that was like that was like the Ronnie Zamora thing all over again. Oh, television intoxication, TV made me do it, being on that show made me do it, even though it was three days later. It took me three days to get around to doing it, to, to get pissed off and fired up. Crazy. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the mobile one line. Here's a mobile in Deerfield Beach. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Up? Neil, you know what? I listen to your show, and there's a lot of things you say that you want people to agree with you, but you can't go like that, Neil. You can't go, go like, like what? It doesn't go like that. You want people to agree with you. I don't care whether you agree or disagree. Am I telling you you have to agree? It's like you want people to be all to be hated. No, nobody can do that. We can't do that. Be hated with what? What are you talking about? No, you're talking about... You know, there's no God. There's this. You can't tell. Sir, people. I'm talking about a piece that was on 60 Minutes last night. Can you handle that? Did you see it? No. You know what I'm talking about? No, I'm not. Then uh, they, if the answer is no, then what are you calling the show for? I want to talk to people that know what I'm talking about. That would be a good start. And as far as, well, if you want to believe your fairy tales, be my guest. I don't expect you to agree with me. You believe whatever crap you want to believe, sir. It's a free country to a point. Unless, of course, you want to express a different opinion from the mainstream, in which case you have to take a lot of crap, but I'm used to it. One call on the board here. Look at that. After this piece on air last night, 5670560, oh, pound 560 on a mobile one line. What a, this, I'm telling you, this is the last place in the world, this area, this town, this part of this peninsula that hangs down there, that you could discuss any of these things when expect to get any kind of a response. It's taken me 100 years to figure it out. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Neil. And the response you do get is guys like this jackass. Give me a song and a dance. You don't even know what I'm talking about. Yes. Um, the reason I called, actually, was because that bit that you played about the Scotsman. Yeah. 
Um, I played golf with a guy recently. He and his wife were Scotland, and he sounded exactly like it. And when he missed a shot on one hole, he says, oh, I blew that hole. But well, the guy and I were playing golf. We didn't even really pee our pants just laughing so hard. Yeah, he blew but it. In, re- in response to that guy with Jenny Jones, the, the lawsuit was filed by You've the... You've got to stick your spoon in it, lad. Don't worry, it's not going to break. Oh, well, the, the lawsuit was filed by the family of the guy that shot. Right. He was saying that the Jenny Jones show should have known that this guy was mentally unstable, that they shouldn't have stayed. Right, like they're going to do a psychiatric exam of every guest they have on the air. Ridiculous. Right. Well, that's and, it, all. and let me say it again. The two guys had had a sexual liaison, okay? They were both homosexual. They had had sex together, and so how in the world would they have known that? In addition to which, it came out during the trial that he was aware that this guy might have been the one that they were going to bring on. He was already aware of that. Right. Well, that's the whole point. That's why it's so ridiculous. Okay, and God bless you, sir. Thank you. And we'll, like I said, we'll take the 25 million, split it up, and have a hell of a good time with it. We'll just give it to the church. Then they'll have a lot more money to cover up these things. If they would offer this guy more than 10000 they never would have made 60 minutes last night. I mean, 10000 bucks? Get serious. $10 million, maybe. 567-0560, pound 560 on a mobile one line. As we keep probing and searching, here's West Palm Beach. Hello. Yeah, hey, Neil. How you doing? Okay, sir. I wanted to bring up uh, three different things. Uh, first of all, with uh, Jenny Jones, one of the things they mentioned about uh, that guy who was unstable, they said he's an alcoholic. And talk about uh, not accepting responsibility. You ever notice now how drugs and alcohol, I mean, that's this condition, and, and that you know alleviates any responsibility upon yourself? Yeah, too bad. Yep. Um, too bad. The, Fly his ass is what I say. Exactly. Um, the other thing I was going to bring up. They won't drink anymore. Is, uh, talk, you know, those infomercials, if you search around on those TV stations, you always have those, those religious uh, nuts where you can put your hand on the TV screen, mm-hmm. and, they, and, you know, they say, oh, uh, you know, your gallbladder will be healed or whatever. You put your your hand on the TV screen, and they got all these people calling in to uh, to send them more money. And and the third thing, I was brought up Catholic. I went through a CCD, all that, um, and I was actually propositioned by my CCD uh, teacher. He wanted to put uh, his coxa hoist in my ass, mm-hmm. and uh, so I had to get out of that real quick. Maybe he had a cracked coxus like uh, Greg Reed. <laughs> maybe. Have have a good day. Been, or maybe he just had a cracked problem. Okay, thank you, sir. There you go. And I know there's a lot of you out there that won't admit it. I understand it's a very sensitive area, so to speak. I mean, you know, what was the story? Was he going to massage your, uh, or maybe just massage your ego? Maybe that's what Father wanted him to do. 567 0560, pound 560 on a mobile one liner. For that guy that called before about are there any good Catholics, this isn't the show about the dogs that didn't get lost, okay? Any more than 60 minutes is. Yeah, that's what the guy wants. He wants to show about all the, yeah, all the dogs that didn't get lost. Here's a list of all the names. Here's a mobile in Lantana. Hello. Yeah, hello, Neil. Did, but did this guy uh, say he thought it was his girlfriend that was going to show, uh, show up at the show? I beg your pardon? Well, I did, no, uh, no that, that's, that is 5670560, oh, pound 560 on a mobile one line. And let me say it again. The reason he wasn't going to beat the <laughs> out of him or anybody else is because the two of them knew each other and they'd already had sex. Oh, geez. Well, you can't handle that, can you? God forbid that they're hearing about all these uh, things going on. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on a mobile one line. I can see it's going to be another big Monday here at the big uh, the old not so okay corral. Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. I hope they fry that bitch. Meaning what? What bitch are you talking about? That Jenny Jones. Yeah, fry that bitch. Fry her. There you go. Okay. Loudmouth jackass. Okay, one call left on the board. I guess we can play uh, Britney Spears from now until 2 o'clock. We can just uh, Spirit. Or we can just play Spirit. 5670560, five, oh, five, pound 560 on the mobile one line. Anybody in town from out of town? Let me say it again. What you hear is what you get. The deadest place on the face of the earth. Even in Calcutta, it's paradise compared to here. And speaking of the hypocrites, by the way, the Herald, I know, thanks to Adam and our sales department brought this into me. Big piece they had in yesterday's two pages in the travel section in the Herald, the ones that are always telling us about the evils of gambling and the evils of Vegas and how horrible it is there. Two big pages, bet on it. Picture of the big new uh, Mandalay Bay and the Paris Casino and this and that and Venetian. What a bunch of hypocrites. And then they got all these package deals in there, as somebody I know would say. They got package deals. 10.56 10.56 at 560 QAM. Provision is the... QAM, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. If 
you're a skinhead or white supremacist, you know that the forces pulling the strings in the government are closing down on all those great websites we've become accustomed to. Well, we still have the U.S. Postal Service to rely on. So now is the time to join the Nazi of the Month Club. For just $8.99 a month, you get the complete history of one prominent Nazi, past or present, the particular group he hates, and any subversive activity they may be planning. So no matter what the race, religion, or ethnic group you hate, Nazi of the Month is right up your alley. Just call 1-800-SKINHEAD to order. Order today and get your very own synthetic Adolf mustache to impress your friends absolutely free. That's 1-800-SKINHEAD. Order today. It's 1102 at 560 WQM. Happy Monday to you. we got 400 open lines, 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. See, a lot of people out there, they get pissed off at me or they get pissed off at 60 Minutes for bringing out these facts. Instead of getting pissed off at their church, at the lies and at the corruption and all the crap that's going on in there and at all the money, their money, by the way, that's being spent to cover it up. I mean, here they had to defend the lawsuit the first time, and now they're going to uh, appeal the uh, – they're going to have to go through it again. Not to mention, of course, the, what is it, a billion dollars was the last figure we had for the uh, settlements that they had to make, the out-of-court settlements, to pay off all these people who, whose kids had been molested by their priests? A billion dollars could feed a lot of starving schleppers all over the world, like right here in this hemisphere in Latin America, all those starving schleppers. Here's a mobile implantation. Hello. Good morning, Neil. Yes, sir. How are you, sir? Great. Good, good, good show this morning. Neil, I just want to let you know, I was never into... Um... One of your favorite uh, croon is Luis Miguel. However, Saturday night, I was watching Saturday Night Live. Did you happen to catch Rick Martin? No, I did not. Martin? No. Neil, the man is phenomenal, sir. That's all I can tell you. Ricky That's Martin is phenomenal? Phenomenal. Based on what? Based upon his talent, his moves. His his moves? He's outrageous, Neil. Yeah. That's all. What do you mean? Yeah. I mean, he's wonderful. Have you seen he's him wonderful before? wonderful what? Have you seen him before? He, I, I, see, I, I've known Ricky Martin a lot longer than you have before he became fashionable to know Ricky Martin. Perhaps. I was never into Menudo as you were. No, I wasn't uh, into Menudo the way you're suggesting, but I knew I who Menudo was, yes. I see. But I, I'll call just to compliment you on your taste. because uh, I, My taste in what? I'm not a Ricky Martin fan. No, you're not. No. Oh, no, I am. Huh? And I'll admit it. I said I am. Okay, well, God bless you. I hope you have a great okay. life together. Okay. I mean, it's another product of hype. That's the big word, boys and girls all over the world. Just remember, if you have a marginal, I mean, he's, you know, I wish him all the best. I'm happy for him. Not a bad guy. He never stole a freight train. He looks pretty good. After the 20th makeover, he looks pretty damn good. They got those puffy cheeks all slimmed down. You know, whatever they did to him, he looks damn good. But, I mean, the idea that he's some kind of a great performer and he's oh, Elvis and he's, I mean, there's a whole big, I got it right here. 7,000 screaming fans out there and to see him at Specs. A few days ago, 8 o'clock in the morning, some kid skipped school. Here it is. Hey, Ricky, you're so fine, you blow my mind. And that was the guy saying that. Forget about the girls. Of course, at least the guys, maybe they had a chance, you know. But it goes on and on and on. I mean, here's one, uh, Carlos, uh, uh, Holly Taylor, 15. She says he's better than Carlos Ponce, which I don't know who that is. Do you know who that is? And even better than Jerry Rivera. How do you like that? Oh, my God. Wow. Jeez, now you're getting a little carried away, don't you think? The product of hype. You can hype anything, man. You can take any, you can package it, you can uh, pedal it. And I wish him all the luck in the world. But anybody thinks he's a great performer, all I can say is, uh, yeah. Here's a lady in Miami Beach. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, ma'am. Hey, I haven't talked to you for a while. Female caller listens every day, but I don't always get a chance to call. Okay. A couple things, if I might. I wondered, I thought about you, did you read or hear about those two blue hairs up in Margate that got thrown out of the theater for switching? No. You didn't? No. Oh, God, they had like, they said 80-year-old Bertha and her uh, 95-year-old boyfriend, Ray, or whatever their names were, got thrown out of Margate for purchasing a ticket for one movie and switching to another. And I thought thought about you. (laughs) And the other thing is, Neil, and I don't know if anybody has mentioned this. But did they steal the the silverware? That's the question. (laughs) And the salt and pepper shakers and the sweet and low. Mm-hmm. Hey, listen, has anybody told you about the Game Show Network? You like those old game shows, right? I and That's another one. I was way ahead of you guys on that because I've had the big dish for 12 years. Well, you know what? I just got cable not too long ago, and honest to God, I'm hooked to that. I watched like yeah. the old match game with Gene Rayburn. Uh, that, that's 000. my favorite. I love the old match game. Well, you know, you mentioned the $100,000 pyramid. I love that show. Like I said, that was my favorite. You watched that quite a bit then. 
What? No, uh, I haven't watched it in a long time, but now that you mention it, I'm going to go home and watch it. Oh, I wanted to mention I didn't know if anybody had one final thing. Is there any reason, uh, Neil, when you're gone that they don't play your tapes anymore? I don't get to listen all the time, and I really used to enjoy some of your tapes. Because the tapes suck. That's the main reason. Well, you're always Cause good. Because it's much better having George on doing a live show than playing a bunch of stale old repeat tapes. By the way, George is a nice-looking guy. I saw him when I was watching your TV show one night. Uh-huh. Well, listen, I just want to say thanks for all the laughs. Okay, and have a great day. Okay, she was all over the place. Anybody have any idea what she was really trying to say? No. No. Anybody want the tapes back? No. No. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. We're talking Ricky Martin today. We're talking Catholic priest. We're talking about homos in the uh, Catholic Church. We're talking about all kinds of good stuff. And it's Monday, so these people still ain't got a goddamn thing to say. I mean, how long can you keep it in the closet, baby? I know it's disturbing to you that there's this fag on the radio. See, if I were a heterosexual like most of you people, then it would be maybe, uh, you know, then what credibility would I have? But there's that old saying about it knows one to take one or however that goes. It takes one to uh, do one. That's how it goes. Here's a lady in Marathon. Hello. Lady in Marathon. Hi. Yes, ma'am. I'm a first-time caller. Uh Uh-huh. I went to boarding school at the Catholic convent, and the nuns do beat you. Yeah. And if you don't fall in line and comply, they make you skip meals also. Uh Uh-huh. And that little Banana Republic, Grenada, where I was born, uh, was hit very badly by a hurricane. I think it was Janet many years ago. Yeah. And the convent was almost wiped out. And it was a terrible scandal because in the walls of the convent, they found the remains of countless infants. Fetuses, yeah. Fetuses. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the priests lived next door. Yeah. The church was built next to each other. So we all knew what was going on. Yeah. And these people who are in denial are full of you-know-what. Full of crap. Amen. Yeah. God bless you, sweetheart. Okay. See ya. Thank you. See you at the old rectory. Five, six, seven. Well, at least maybe there was some, uh, you know, maybe some of the priests were doing the nuns. At least that's a step in the right direction, huh? Five, six, seven, oh, five, sixty, pound five, sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Maybe if we just had a lot more nuns, the priests might change their habit. Here's uh, Winwood. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, how you doing? Okay. Listen, let me ask you something. Is uh, George a gay caballero? No, he, uh, is, is this the same call you make every day? Didn't you call Friday with the same question? Yes. No, he wasn't on Friday and he's not today. Is that is that a medley of your material? Maybe. Uh-huh, uh-huh, maybe. Jackass. Every day this guy's going to call with the same stupid question, and the answer every day is going to be, no. and he's not your type anyway, okay? You don't want to date. Moron. Five, six, seven. I'm telling you, man, this is, this is what you got out there. And, and I don't understand. What is this all about here all of a sudden? John Penis just comes to me the other day. I, this sales department of ours, they're getting like that old IOD sales department. Just when I thought that maybe we had some people in the sales department that knew something, come to find out they're full of crap. You know, there are 100 reasons for you to own a Beeper, and now there are 36 more reasons for you to shop at Beeper Mania. That's 36 locations. If you're looking for a smart, friendly, fast help in choosing the best Beeper for you, Beeper Mania staff can help. Beeper Mania's got the biggest selection of Beepers anywhere in town, over 20 different models to choose from. But the best reason to go to Beeper Mania is that nobody undersells Beeper Mania. They guarantee the lowest prices in town. Come to Beeper Mania today for their mother of a sale. Celebrate Mother's Day the Beeper Mania way. <laughs> On time, so he tells them to make the order to go. Three stripping through the bag as he gets into his car. He eats while sitting in traffic, but doesn't get too far. Takes a pet to Bismol in hopes that it will last. Cause then you really might know what it's like to get painful gas. Then you really might know what it's like, what it's like. Then you really might know what it's like, what it's like. Then you really might know what it's like, what it's like. Yes. 
then you really might know what it's like. It's 11.15 at 560 WQA. And by the way, I don't want to start uh, playing Butch Boss here, you know, but it is Monday the 10th of May. Last time I checked, it should be payday. It should also be the day that that bonus check comes through for some of us who have it in our contract, like 10 days after the uh, April 30th. And Greg Reed, of course, just like just like last time, remember? He had an opportunity to come in here. This is a man. Some people are a mensch, and some people are just, uh, you know, whatever he is. Yeah. yeah. Like that. The guy walks in here with his red bulbous nose again, spreading his germs and disease, who can't get rid of his illness, mental or physical. I thought that's what he was doing in there, is giving you your check. Oh, yeah, right. Hold your breath. See, that, that would be an act of class to do that, saying, great job, here's your bonus check. Oh, by the way, Miriam gave me your paycheck. It's payday. Great job. Thanks a lot, and have a great life. You know, that, that would be a classy thing to do. Does that go on here? No. No. So is she out again today or what? Is Miriam here? No, I mean, now is a good time to start working on this project because, uh, you know, I mean, it's only 11.15, but nevertheless, because then next thing you know, everybody's out to a two-hour lunch, and then uh, this one uh, disappeared. He went home sick, like the day he was supposed to return my phone call. Here's a mobile in Boca. Hello. Hello? Yes, sir. Oh, hi. Hi, Neil. How you doing? Great. <laughs> it's so great. I always listen to you. I'm so happy. Yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, when I was when I was younger, my father used to send me to real religious school. Yes. And we used to play ball on the roof of the religious school. Mm-hmm. And if the the head rabbi, whoever the guy was, if he didn't like what you were doing the right way, he called you over, he gave you a little finger to come here, and he started pulling you by your little pairs and all. Uh huh. He gave you a little finger, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and that really hurt. And you know, and over the years, you know, you know, you try to be religious and all, but the, the why is that? The, because, you know, you, it's built into you. You know, your father's been like that. They beat it into you all these years. Yeah. You, know, you know, they make you feel bad if, you don't, if you're not Jewish and all. It's like it's, like it's, it's guilt times a million times or something. It's like it's so hard to live and stuff. When your mother and your father's always yelling at you like that, you know, you've got you to gotta be kosher. You've got to go to school. You've got to be kosher. Yeah, oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> Just remember, it. pal, it's a goyish event and uh, get, a, get a life. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. You know that guy that we had two of those uh, Caribbean type. I'm not really sure which denomination, and it doesn't make any difference. But the one that started spewing about uh, well, he didn't know what I was talking about, but about God, and you want us to believe this? That's not the point. This has got nothing to do with God or whatever you believe it. It's got to do with corruption. That's what it's got to do with. It's got to do with a corrupt institution with the uh, wool being uh, pulled over your eyes, and they don't want to deal with that. Just pretend you can't see it. The smoke screen is working real well. Thank you. You don't need any organized religion to believe in whatever God you want to believe in, okay? It doesn't cost you a dime. Here's a mobile in Deerfield. Hello. Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, I like to agree with you about Ricky Martin. He's not a good performer or nothing. You know, he's a nice guy, whatever, but he really, truly does stink, you know? He stinks? I didn't say that. He doesn't, like, stink, like, you know, but, he's, like, music is reruns. He does the same thing over and over. Yeah, that's right. Beat, that's right. That's right. Exactly. Of... Hoochie Coochie, and he does the, he does the hoochie. Yeah. He does his uh, Hispanic Tom Jones routine and yeah. wiggles his hips, and he does some hoochie coochie, and now he's hotter than a pistol. Exactly. They, they hype me up like that. I'd be as big as he is. They there there you up. go. Well, keep working on it. It'll get bigger. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty. We got six hundred open lines this Monday. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to start today on a crusade. What's the story with my check, by the way? Uh, she's going to look into it. Well, that was quick. Thanks, Miriam. That was real fast. She sure looked into it real fast. Oh, here's one you can see the amount right through the envelope. Well, that's nice. Well, I like the ones that they give you. Bonus. I like the ones that they give you with the envelope, like uh, un. Uh, they don't even want to waste the tongue on it. You know what I'm saying? And the envelope either. The mucilage on the mucilaged. Here's Dania. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, that, that, that guy called me for you. Um, Which like, one? Which one is that? Uh, the, the rabbi guy or whatever. The guy sounds like he's from New York or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah Boy! That, that, that epitomizes why the Heat are not doing well. <laughs> okay? Because simply of the fact of the transiness. What really takes me off here is... It epitomizes why the Heat well, are not doing well? well I'm going to explain. What does the rabbi have to do with the Heat doing well? Is uh, Pat Riley Jewish? No, I'm going to explain. Is Alonzo Mourning Jewish? No, I'm going to explain because the fact, 
We do not have, I mean, I'm born and raised here, okay? And we well, have, that explains a lot. Well, we have a tr- total transient population. When you go to, I went to the game, and, and you're gosh for money, you're looking at, you know, further fans are, are New York fans, and uh, it's just that the heat, the, the community doesn't get behind their team the way it should. What does that have to do with that guy? What does that mean? What are we talking about teams? This is not, we're not talking about teams. What does that have to do with the price of bananas? Well, I'm just, get out of here, you jackass. Go drink another uh, bottle of rum, okay? Go get with Jimmy Buffett again, speaking of no, no talent assholes. I'll tell you one thing. If I had to compare Ricky Martin to Jimmy Buffett, Ricky Martin is God. Oh! There's a talented guy that Ricky Martin compared to that Jimmy Buffett, who's for a bunch of cheap South Florida drunks. <laughs> That's all he's for. Wasting away in any place you uh, Wasting away in Homestead. That would be a good place for him. That's what George was doing for two hours on Saturday. And you see, you notice... Five minutes it took for me to get these checks in here, my regular check and a bonus check. Thank you, by the way, Miriam. God bless you. Five minutes, and you wonder why I go on here and say all of these things, because you know why? It works. That's why I do it. Get them off their, uh, get them off the dime. Like George's check, get them off the dime. That's about what it is. Five, six, seven, oh, five. By the way, did Duff get his new desk yet? No. Just uh, I'm going to bring that up every day. If I forget, you remind me. Did Bluff get his new desk yet? No. Over there, our program director, our pussy galore. Did you get it? No. Our PG? No. And the desk either. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Tomorrow we're going to be discussing how come we got no young lady interns working here at QAM. Here's Opalaka. Hello. Talent, Besides ours. Talent. I want to talk about Britney Spears. Yeah, huh? great. Here's uh, Hollywood. Hello. Yes. Uh, most of the problem with the, the Catholic Church is that the people in it are basically ignorant and they don't want to believe anything. My parents were immigrants and they went to second and third grade. They lived every day the uh, doctrine of the church. Yeah. They forced me into the Catholic Church. I hated it. Mm-hmm. I, uh, they wanted me to be a priest. I went, oh, to, God. Uh, I, went, I went to church and to Sunday school in terror. I was raped by a Catholic priest where a nun held me down so uh-huh. he could rape me. Uh, when I was 21 and I went to college, I became an atheist. Okay, I got out of the church when I realized that these people do not want to see the truth. And most of the fact that the reason why they don't want to see the truth is in terror because they're going to go to hell, which is another cop-out of mm-hmm. all religions. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I... I my my children that I raised, I raised them as atheists. And I told them I'd strangle them to death if they ever went with anybody, particularly if they were Catholic. And uh, <laughs> uh, that's had, a nice broad-minded view of life. Yes, and right. uh, and um, they, they, you're correct. The Catholic Church is the biggest gay club in right. the world. Okay? That's right. And uh, anybody who has a chance, okay, that can get away from... I got news for you. Even Club Cathode Ray ain't even in the same league with the Catholic Church. Get away from ignorant people because these people are the ones that maintain the religion and the church. And God bless you, sir. God bless you, too. Okay. Let me say it again. You know, if if there's a God, he wouldn't have created sex if it was evil, okay? So the whole concept of celibacy being something wonderful and the idea that there are people who are really uh, going to be celibate, I'm sorry, but <clears throat> wrong. Wrong. No such animal. It doesn't exist. It's a fig newton of your imagination. Oh, but they're so much more spiritual than we are. Right. Especially about 2 o'clock in the morning after they had a couple of good Jack Daniels in them and whatever else they had in them. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's a mobile in Miami Beach. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes? I just passed Barbara Catman Drive. There is really, do, Neil. There's really such a place? On uh, South Beach, going down Collins, uh, just a little bit past 10. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, my Neil. My car started to tremble. And your Neil, and has your anybody teeth, talked about that? And your teeth started turning yellow. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, that, that fat bitch, Monica Lewinsky, on Saturday Night Live. Isn't that pathetic? That, she, she's, doing, she's doing book signings now. She's on Saturday Night Live. She's a big star, and people are, like, sucking up to her. Here's a bitch that nearly brought the whole government down, and only in America would they make her into a goddamn uh, a folk legend. Yeah, she wanted to keep a real low big, profile after this, right? Big, fat, cow. You know, and, and what is this teaching the, you know, the young people? It's like, oh, go ahead, you know, uh, manipulate yourself, and, uh, and then turn around and make a million dollars out of it. Right. You know, it's like... Uh, well, see, he would have been better off if he would have manipulated himself, but the problem is she was doing the manipulating. 
I mean, the skit was funny, and I have to recognize that part of me you know, is laughing. On the other hand, it's sick. I don't. I don't sick. think it. I don't think it's the least bit funny. There's nothing when I see her on anything. I don't. Not only don't I laugh, I get sick to my stomach. I get nauseous. The idea that her and that cow Linda trip and all these other pigs, all these other sluts, all these other subhuman pieces of crap are running around making money from nearly bringing down the government because they got a big mouth. It's terrible. Yeah. All right, Neil. Love you so. And God bless you, sir. You got a big mouth for anything going in and anything coming out. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. See, they they won't they won't come to grips with us. They'll keep going here every Sunday. All these good Catholics we got, especially your people, by the way, because they're so unbelievably brainwashed. They'll keep going here every Sunday and sticking the wafer in their mouth and drinking the wine from that uh, from that silver cup. And God only knows where your priest has had his tongue, baby. Oh man. They could have the nectar of the gods in that cup, and I wouldn't come anywhere near it, knowing if that if any of those priests had their mouth on that baby first and the cup too. In fact, there's several cups around town I can think of they'd probably like to have their mouth on. Since this is your sports station. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on rhymes with sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Tonight on Masterpiece Theater, the Tourette. Syndrome players present Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. What like through yon window break? It is the East, and Juliet is the slut you pay, you The correct Syndrome players presentation of Romeo and Juliet on tonight. Stop the theater. Yeah, if you think she's a pig, take a look at Monica, baby. She is growing like Elsie the Borden cow. It's 1129 at 560 WQM, 567 0560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line as we continue our search for a straight priest. Just initials would do. Here's uh, Pembroke Pines. Hello. Hello, Neil. Did you see the article in the, in the Herald yesterday about uh, Wayne Hypinga and no. how amazing it was that uh, he convinced Jimmy Johnson to stay with the Dolphins and all that? Oh, I, the article I was all about Jimmy. The thing that I saw wasn't about Wayne. It was about how Jimmy has never told his girlfriend that he loves her and what a cold, calculating piece of turd he is. You mean that article? Yeah, it was in yeah. that article. He, they were they were talking about how amazing it was that uh, Wayne Huizinga, uh turned around his plane, came back, convinced Jimmy to stay, all this stuff. And uh, I just thought you the you whole read... the whole story is, 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 is you know I, here we are with the sports station. They still don't have it right on this station. That's not the real story. The real story is Jimmy got threatened to quit unless they brought in Dave Wanstead, and he, uh, you know, it was a power play, and Wayne is pissed, still pissed off about it. There you but go. for some reason, nobody in this town can get that story right. Uh, because well, most of them have their heads up Jimmy's, them. so they don't want to tell you the truth. Neil, one more thing. Could you play Buffalo Bill for me? Okay. Thanks. That movie was on, by the way, last night. Can you believe that? It was on uh, UPN on channel whatever that is, 33, 39, one of those. It puts the lotion in the basket. It was on there again. Real grainy uh, film of it, too, by the way. Real bad grainy. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. We've got 6,000 open lines here. We'll never make it till noon, much less 2 o'clock. I better crank up that Menudo music again. Or is it Ricky Martin? Same difference. Yeah, Ricky Martin. He's real hot now, man. Yeah, okay, whatever you say, we believe you. We believe it. Here's Hialeah. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hey, Neil. Yes. Hey, uh, you realize that... Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Neil? Okay, sir. Uh, I've listened to your show for a while, and uh, I've heard you and the other atheists, and I've heard the Jesus freaks call in. And, you know, the funny thing is, I'm sitting here scratching my head. I don't see how the hell either you or the Jesus freaks know anything as far as what happens after we die. Long Last time I checked, neither one of you all died yet. Yeah, I mean, so... Where, where do you get your... Uh, what makes you believe that we that we just happened to be here, that we just, you know, something happened, and pop, bam, we're here? I'm no, you, you, you missed the point, pal. I don't care. All I know is that we're here. I don't believe anything about that. I, I don't, don't either. I don't. So, so then what's the point? No, I'm just curious. I'm hearing everybody saying this is, you know, there is no God. Then I'm hearing, hearing, uh, you know, if you don't, this is the truth. If you don't believe it, you're going to be smoking for the rest of your life. Yeah. You know, I see how anybody knows anything. So what, I mean, what kind of a concept is that? First of all, what kind of a God is that that anybody would invent and they did that that would be so hateful that if, if by some some uh, accident, you didn't wind up believing whatever bunch of fairy tales it was that you would wind up tw- twisting in hell 
for for eternity? What kind of a what kind of a concept is that beside an S and M concept? I mean, I don't. I mean, I mean, be honest with you. I mean, I mean, I wish I could believe in it, but I, you know, I don't. I don't. Why? Really why do you it, but... why do you wish you could believe in it? Well, because I mean, at least I mean, I think in their minds they at least know where they're going after they die. I don't have a clue. No, they I mean, don't. I don't know I'm... Sir, let me say it again. Have you ever stepped on an insect? It's dead. At least as far as we know. As far as we okay, well, listen, I'll see an insect heaven. Okay, there you go. See, even had to come back for that. As far as we know, maybe it's in cockroach heaven. Maybe it's in skeeter heaven. Never thought about that. Very good, sir. As far as we know, it's dead. But you never know because maybe an ant has got a soul. How about an uncle? Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's Overtown. Hello. Hey, Neil, how are you doing? Okay, sir. Yeah, I just want to know if you uh, saw the Herald on Sunday. There was an article about the Cuban coach who left and stayed in Baltimore. He left uh, his wife and four kids behind because the infrastructure stunk in Cuba. Uh huh. So now he wants to start a new life. You know, what a great example. There you go. Yeah, and, I'll screw them, basically. Hey, and by the way, about Britney Spears, she was on the cover of People or one of those other magazines, and uh, she had a love trail. We got her right here. Rolling Stone, yeah. Rolling yeah, Stone, I we got, got her right here. I Real, got it. <laughs> Real sexy. Uh-huh. All right, I'm Adam Mature. You have a good one. And back to you. Okay, one call after the board, that's it. I told you we wouldn't make it till noon, much less 2 o'clock today. These people ran dry 10 years ago. Talk about Elsie the board and cow. I'm even I'm 10 steps better than that. I've been milking these bastards for the last 10 years, and they ran out of material long before that. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Just the 60 minutes piece alone last night, which I know a lot of you people saw, that should have you off your ass right now on the phone with something to say about it. But does it? No. No, because this is South Florida, pal. This is South Florida. These, this is the land of the walking goddamn dead. Pretty soon there will be a rascal house on every street corner in this town. Because that's all we got left is dead people. Here's a and banana boat people. Here's a mobile in Boca. Hello. Hey, Neil, how you doing? Okay, sir. Yeah, to get your opinion on uh, all these Chinese protesters. Uh, I, I, what the hell's their problem anyway? They got to have something to do, don't they? When you got two billion people over there, they got to have something to uh, carry on about. Well, the government. We had an old. We had an old map, you know. Was, uh, we probably got it at Sitco gas stations, and we had an old map and uh, had some bad information on there. The government, you know, won't let them. Uh, if they want to be stealing those nuclear secrets, then maybe, uh, you know, we're going to have some accidents. That's all I can tell you. I don't understand why the government doesn't let them protest against them. If they'll let them protest against us. I, well, I they, hey, see, now you got it all backwards. Now we're the enemy, man. We're the bad guys. And have a great day. I guess that was it. Okay, five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. I got those two checks in my pocket. I could suddenly uh, take a turn for the worse and take ill right now. We could bring in Lenny Martez to do the rest of the show and talk about the Knicks. Here's a mobile in Hollywood. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. I don't want to talk about God today. Yeah. I want to talk about hockey. You got a minute? Yes. Okay. I, I was out of town. I'm only out of town about two weeks ago, and I heard you say something about Mike Lang, uh, announcer from the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah. Greatest in the game. Without a doubt. Well, that's your opinion. He's he's great, but he's not the greatest in the game, but Ooh, that's your opinion. He's I great. don't know. I used to listen to when I was a kid. What about it? Well, I want to say that I've been watching a lot of the hockey playoffs, and I'm glad the, the Panthers aren't in it because they just play boring hockey. I saw a game the other night, St. Louis game the other night, 4-4. Four to 5-4 four. to four was the finals. The best hockey game I've seen in the last 10 Yeah, years. that was a good game. Crappy goaltending, but a good game. Well, I think that the average fan wants to see a 5-4 to four game. I don't think they want to see a one nothing game. I think that... Dominic Hostick shutting out the other team is, is, is boring to me. I'd rather. I agree. I couldn't agree with you more. I don't want to see one nothing games. They stink. Two to one games stink. Well, hopefully the uh, hopefully the Marlins won't have the worst record in the world this year. But I want to say I love your show and get back to work. Okay, and get back to work, huh? That was work, sir. You were it. That was the end of our calls. That was our last call for Monday. Not bad. We lasted until eleven thirty-seven. I got my check fifteen minutes ago. Mark it down. Five six seven oh five sixty. Pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. The Neil Rogers Show, when Tom Chicka finally gets around to writing that article that he's supposed to be writing this week about the rating book that came out two weeks ago, you can write that the Neil Rogers Show as we knew it is now over, at least on Mondays, and maybe uh, in general. I'm sitting here. There's not a call on the goddamn board. George is potching around with some crank there on line seven. There's not one call on the goddamn board here with all of these things going on. And the excuse is, well, it's Monday, you know. Well, guess what? I'll stay home on Monday. How's that? That sounds good? Yes. Sounds good to me. God, three-day weekend sounds magnificent. WQAM.
Neil. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Okay. Well, I'm wondering with all this, this great old-time religion, all this nice stuff that's happening, it's starting to be great. It's starting to be great with all this religious stuff. All these people just killing each other and bombs going off and suicide. Yeah, well, that's nothing new. I mean, did you? Uh, by, by the way, you know Dana Plato, right? Yeah, she's dead. Did you? Was she on Stern? Yeah, that's what they. Before? That's what they said in the story, and uh, then she uh, over overdosed. I, I think that uh, put her over what? the edge. He was. Uh, he was. I heard parts of that. I wasn't sure if it was her. I didn't want to. Cause she, she died. I yeah, mean, it was he, her. Too delicate. But you know, he was a little mean to her, and it mm-hmm. wasn't. You know, it was, it's just it's unbelievable. How do you like that? Then she goes home and uh, ODs <sighs> on all these pills. All these. Very things. sad. Very sad stuff. Thanks, God. Okay. Of course, we did see that scene. They kept showing that one thing of her with the chains. I mean, I don't, I don't know what that was. That a drug thing that she was arrested for 80 million times? Armed robbery. Oh, armed robbery. To get money for drugs. Oh, to get money for drugs. I knew it was a drug thing. Because that's just, you know, that's Hollywood for you. That's showbiz. 22 before uh, noon at 560 WQM. I don't know. Put the lotion in the basket. How I love to lick a quid and that is why I become a singing lesbian nun. Sister Mary Catherine was so impressed with what I'd done. She gave me action with her son. Can you conceive for safety and leave that this song went to number one? Because I was a nun. Found a way to make some cash and hope the royalties will last because retired nuns don't get none. I never made it that big because I didn't look that great. So I got me a new habit doing drugs and getting laid. Had my one and only hit and then the Vatican got pissed. The Pope said, there's my big. Now that I'm dead, I can reveal how much I wanted Sally Fields to go whistling in my wheat field. 1144 at 560 WQM. I'm looking at this thing in the travel section of yesterday's Herald. I'm getting pissed off. And what even gets me more pissed off is that that none of you are pissed off. Because this is the... Remember that song, Town Without Pity by Gene uh, Pitney? Maybe Boca Bryan could redo that, The Town Without Passion. Oh, by the way, no check for Boca Bryan this morning. I forgot all about him. Boy, is he a pain in the ass. Call him up and tell him to stay home. No, seriously, here we are, the travel section, Section J, as in joke, in yesterday's Herald. Bet on it. Here's a big full-color picture of Mandalay Bay, which opened at the uh, south end of the Strip in March on, uh, in Vegas, which you've had some spy reports on, and people say it's very, very nice. And then here's a thing of the Venetian, the brand new one that just opened a few days ago, and a thing about the Bellagio, and about New York, New York, and about this, and about that, and it goes on and on and on, pages and pages, and then we go on about Biloxi, and then here's a thing that says um, uh, Gulf Coast has never seen anything like the Beau Rivage, and it's got a picture of that with its $700 million Beau Rivage and eye opener, unlike anything else on the Gulf Coast, and here's all the information, if you go, how to go, where to go, who to call, the packages, yada, 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 and this is the same God damn mother scratching Miami Herald that along with our other bogus newspaper in this town for years, every time anybody even mentions casino gambling, they start crapping in their pants. They don't let a month go by without at least one editorial about the evils of casino gambling. These are the same people back in the, uh, was it the 70s or the early 80s when we tried to vote in casino gambling that ran those bogus pictures. Mark Fisher wrote that stupid thing in a paper in the Herald with a picture of some old bum out there behind a casino, about a mile behind a casino in the middle of the desert out there, as though that's what Vegas is all about. See, they just keep slapping you in the face because they know they got a monopoly. you got no choice. There's one newspaper in Day. There's one in Broward. That's it. you got no choice. So they just keep slapping the public in the face, just like they did with the Metro Rail. First, they helped to put it over, and then after it turned out to be a lemon a year later, they come out in the uh, Sunday magazine, uh, Metro Fail, a Boondoggle, White Elephant, whatever the hell they called it, and slap the public in the face after you put all your tax money up to build it. Again, it just happens to go downtown, you know, right by the Herald. God, it's unbelievable. The crap that goes on in this town, and it goes on not because of the Herald. It goes on because of the, the indifference of the people who live here. That's why all this stuff keeps going on. Nobody here gives a flying crap about anything. So why do I take it personally that I come in here every day, and no matter what I'm talking about, eh, you know, it's that same, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the response. Oh, God, they're, they're big, they're, they're, they're baseball-sized pellets falling on our roof. Yeah. They're little uh, green monsters just landed from Mars. Yeah. yeah. 
And the goddamn Miami Herald's got uh, 75 pages in here on Vegas and how great it is and all the numbers you can call and go to Vegas, go to Biloxi, go to the Bahamas, go to hell. Yeah. Uh, what time is the early bird, Max? Here's a mobile in Fort Myers. Hello. Gone. Long gone. Okay, thanks for waiting. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. How about on 60 Minutes last night, that spokesman for uh, Notre Dame hiding behind the First Amendment, Uh separation of church and state? Like I said, when it's convenient, they hide behind it. And then, of course, when it's not convenient, when they want to stick their nose into the political system, then they forget all about it. The only thing they want to separate is you know what they want to separate. Rectum. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, one last thing. You're right on the money with Jimmy Buffett. He's a Gordon Gecko with a Hawaiian shirt on. Okay. All right. He's a he's a geeko is what he is. No talent, piece of crap. Only only here could Jimmy Buffett be a big hit. He is the biggest turd burger. I mean, but then again, you know, people have got great taste. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Same people that like vanilla ice cream. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, speaking of the Herald, I was wondering if you saw the article today about the uh, entertainment industry conference in D.C. and our wonderful. I got it right editor. here. I got it right here. And then do you uh, see what Orrin Hatch has to say, blaming the entertainment industry on those shootings? Uh huh. I think he and uh, Charlton Heston ought to get together and massage each other's rifles. What do you think? Or massage something. You son of a. <laughs> yeah. Okay. God bless. Like I said, everybody's looking for a scapegoat. It's the NRA. It's Jack Valenti and the people in Hollywood. It's uh, the video game manufacturers. Nobody takes responsibility for anything, bringing up their kids for uh, for their own actions, for anything else. Why should the kids take responsibility for their own actions when their parents don't want to do it? Like I said, forced sterilization. That's the only answer, because this is a country that loves violence, that loves guns, that loves shooting, that loves all these things. And if they think that by having some stupid conference up there that that's going to change anything, good luck to you, man. All I can say is, here's a mobile in Sunrise. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. I just want to comment on that Dana Plato thing. Speaking of taking responsibility, I knew that somebody was going to open up their mouths and say, that this was Howard Stern's fault as a broadcaster. They're going to blame him for her suicide the next day. The yeah. bottom line is she's been on drugs, yeah. robbing laundries for cash, and suddenly it's a broadcaster's fault. What a bunch of crap. crap. Okay. Unbelievable. Okay, give Howard a big kiss for us. Who cares? 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Uncle Neil. Yes, sir. I got some bad news for you. Ricky yeah. Martin is not gay. Okay. He's not. Why is that bad uh, news? Well, it's bad news for you. I know you'd like him to be gay, but no, no, uh, I would not. Why do I care if Ricky Martin is gay or not? Well, good for the community, I guess. But I met him at Liquid probably a year ago. He was yeah. checking out every girl in the place. He was all over him. He wasn't all over me, even though yeah. I'd have shown him my rectum if he wanted to see it. Uh huh. But uh, I don't think so he's I a homo. That, I guess that proves it to me. I guess it must. Turned you down, so he must be straight. There you go. Okay, thanks for the good news. Uh-huh. Okay, that's what they all say. Yeah, I believe you. Do I believe him? No. I, that makes no difference to me, sir. I don't care. I'm not interested in. Uh, okay, I even waste my time. Ricky Martin on small potatoes. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's a mobile in uh, Miami. Hello, Uncle Neil. Yes, sir. I finally figured out what those postcard carousels are with the muscle bound guys and the little bathing suits. That you kind of virtualize your eyes at when you're waiting online for a lottery ticket. They're they're Jesuit greeting cards. Uh huh. And yeah, you got to feel sorry for the guy who, admittedly, is you know is gay within that whole, no pun intended, uh, regime, and uh, he can't even govern without getting uh, stuck, and has no place to complain. Okay. Yeah. God bless him. And of course, it makes you wonder what the hell he wants to be involved in that uh, whole thing anyway. What does he want to be involved in that anyhow? Can anybody answer me that question? No. I can't figure it out. Why the hell does anybody want to be a nun or a priest? Unless, of course, it's a good hiding place. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Here's a mobile in Miami Shores. Hello. Mobile in Miami Shores? No, it's not a mobile one, Neil. Well, well, whatever it is. Let's go to Miami Shores. Here okay. it is. I have two things for you. One, I want to thank you. The other thing is I know you're a fan of Bob Prince. Yeah. And uh, when my father passed away, my mother gave me a tape, the only interview he ever granted 
uh, I guess, about his dismissal from the Pirates. And right, the KDK, yeah. If you would be interested in that, I would be more than happy to give it to you. Great. Because it's just sitting in the drawer here, and I've just had it for a couple of years. I don't need it. And then, so after the next thing, if you can give me George and your address, I'll mail it to you. Great. The other thing was this morning when you talk about the Catholic Church, when I saw that that $25 million was being donated to them by that couple in Broward, I about went through the roof because mm -hmm. it just made me ballistic. Well, uh, you know, they got to have that money to pay for all those uh, child molestation lawsuits. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> when I finally left the church two years ago, and the reasons I left, were through a priest informing me about what the demands are from the diocese on individual parishes. You know, they have to come across with 40% of their take. Mm -hmm. it's, it's no way they can avoid that, regardless if the parish is rich or poor, the bishop wants 40%. And he could no longer stand in the pulpit and ask the par parishioners for the money. He just had to leave. He quit. And he said, no more. He said, it's a business. It's not what he joined it for. He really was out there to truly help people. I think this was one of the rare individuals. And then at that time, I didn't need much of a push out the door anyhow. That was the final leg for me. Okay, hang on. I pre uh, thank you in advance. Thank you. Okay. Line seven, take that guy or give that guy, give him something. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Our poll question today, Kenneth Mas Macho, um, uh, Britney Spears or Ricky Martin? Here's a mobile in Pembroke Pines. Hello. Uncle Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, how you doing? Great. Uh, great game yesterday, huh? It was uh, pretty not, good. I'm not a Maple Leafs fan. I just I just thought that uh, it, in the last minute or so when that guy tripped Cove off, there should have been a penalty. Don't you think so? Yes, too bad. It's a break. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> we'll take it. Yeah, I know you will. I after know you will. After 32 years of futility, I'll take any breaks we can get. Right. In addition, let me say it again. The score, well, it's not like it was a tie game at the time. You know what I'm saying? The Leafs right. were still ahead. It was 3-2, and then they got the goal that, like, sewed the game up. I grant you that. And Pittsburgh didn't get a power play. But nevertheless, uh, it's not like they got the winning goal based on a lack of a call. They were already ahead. Yeah, you're right there, Neil. But uh, Tom uh, 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 crying up a storm. Okay, and have a great day. 567 oh, 560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. 700 pages on the heat and on the Knicks, and all this crap in both sports sections today. Every I noticed over the weekend, every single columnist in both newspapers, including guys that haven't written a column in 100 years, they're all writing about the heat. Does anybody with a brain really care? No. Of course not. I mean, any a white person with a brain really care? No. Sorry about that to all my dark-complected friends. Well, they care, like Lenny Martez. He cares because he's a dark guy. He's supposed to care about that. That's his thing. You got your thing, we got our thing. Here's a mobile in Charlotte. Hello. Mobile in Charlotte. Hello. Yes, sir. Oh, goody. How you doing? Okay. I'm listening to you through uh, on the Internet. Yes, sir. I used to live in Florida for 40 years and never missed a day of your uh, broadcast. And now right. that I'm up here, uh, I know she went from INZ to QAM. Well, it was and like I nine or ten years at IOD in the middle, yeah. Right, IOD or whatever it was. But the thing is, when I moved up here, I really missed you. And then all of a sudden, somebody told me that you were on the, you know, broadcasting from QAM through the Internet. Right. Yeah, so I listen to you now. I finally got you today. And I think it's a pleasure having you there. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. It's, it's a pleasure it's having me here. Huh? I said it's a pleasure having me here. I couldn't agree with you more. No, no, I mean, it's a pleasure listening to you again. Good. I mean, uh, well, how, you know, how is Charlotte compared to here? Well, it's a little more laid back. The yeah. people are nice. They're right. pleasant. Oh, it's pleasant. Bit, your car breaks down, and everybody will stop and help you rather than trying to aim and hit you. Mm -hmm. and you don't hear any horns. Uh, you know, it's a laid back Goyam community. Right. You know, all the Goyam up here, and uh, they think all those Jews have horns and tails and... Uh, uh, think we're the devil. Well, it was a good idea to change your name to Smith. That was a good first move. <laughs> and Zyg is up, pal. Good hearing from you. Wait a second. Wait a second. In closing, yes. Uh, listen, think. how can I get some recordings of your uh, wonderful things? My son is uh, an aspiring college DJ, and he'd like to uh, play some of your recordings, you know, your little songs and things. Okay. Hang on, George. I'll give you a number. Thank you. And take care of yourself. Thank okay, you. line uh, six. Take care of that uh, Jewish boy, or guy, whatever he is. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line on another real. It, it's a squeezer. It's Monday. We're squeezing it, man. Oh, not that hard, please. 
Yeah, let's talk about pooping on the train again, okay? Should we talk about that? No. I don't think so. See, they think I make that stuff up just to be, I mean, these, this is part of life. This is what life is really all about, okay? Just like that song says, like Monty, like Eric Idle says in that song, life's a piece of, he's right. Could be beautiful, but it ain't. Three minutes before noon at 560 WQM. Do yourself a Miami, Dear Alanis, I don't know if you remember me, but I was the guy whose house you set on fire last year. God, I miss you, even though you blew up my car, cut all my hair off, I miss you, girl. But one quick question, do you think you could let me know when you might let me out of this pit? No one's fed me for weeks, but I'm not complaining. Don't misunderstand me, because I love you with all my heart, but if you happen to see my mother, please let her know I'm not dead yet. Dear Atlantis, I want to tell you that the guy you saw with your best friend, that wasn't me. He might have looked and talked just like me, but that's surely purely coincidental. I was nowhere near that place. I love you too much to look at anyone else. Dear Atlantis, I had a dentist appointment that day, and I was nowhere near the Sheridan Meadowlands Hotel. I would never cheat on somebody who treats me so good and wins all those Grammys, has all that money. Hey, come on, let me out of the pit, will you? <laughs> come on. No. Okay, 1203 at 560 WQM. By the way, somebody uh, sends me, thank you, Cheryl, whoever you are, sends me a bunch of articles, and one is uh, written by Mary Ellen Carr. This is the forum. This is the uh, Mark Gaten Coconut Geek uh, edition. Remember the one about the Sawgrass Mills Mall and the tea rooms and all the uh, activity going on in there? All the homo activity in the Sawgrass. Well, here's one, Cruising for Sex in Margate and Coconut Creek. There you go. Oh! Mary Ellen Carr, we know what she's spending all her time doing. You're looking for glory holes. <laughs> yeah. Man, talk about uh, One Note Charlie. Then Casino Stan sends me this from, uh, looks like the Sun Sentinel letter. How did I miss this? Oh, no, this is from uh, City Link Magazine. Letter to the editor from Gary Parsons in Boca. It says, Neil Rogers, the best talk show host again. Best of 99, April 14. I think not. Try Dick Farrell of WPBR, 1340 AM. And above the uh, little letter, they got a heading that says, Neil's no dick. Okay. Dickie Farkle, remember him? No. PBR, ever heard that station? No. Yeah. That's a mentality of most of the people up there in Palm Beach County. Losers. Dicky Farkle, right up your alley. Little piece of crap. What do you like? About five minutes in IOD? Uh huh. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on a, a mobile one line. We got four hundred open lines. We did make it till noon. That's the first thing. Oh. Made it till noon. Got my check. Got my bonus check. Oh. 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 That's the important stuff. Now we're opening up a bunch of really crappy CDs that Tracy Neely sent us. They're not all crappy. Well, uh, what, you're hiding the good stuff? I haven't seen anything. Well, you good. don't want any of this. Like what? You know, you, this is music. Cranberry. Like maybe, uh, I love the cranberry. Since when? You ripped me for playing cranberry. Are you out of your go. mind? I love the cranberry. All right, I'll get her to send another one. You can have it. You off your rocker or what? It's not the life. We love the cranberries here at QAM. We love the Backstreet Boys. We love the Cranberries. We're not too crazy about Ricky Martin. We don't have any idea who this uh, Chris Perez is, the Chris Perez band, but she sent this over. This is Selena's husband. Anybody want to hear it? No. Good. Here's a mobile in Miami Beach. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. About Dana Plato? Yeah. My theory? Funky Brewster. Yeah, okay. Here's uh, Margate. Hello. Boring. Margate. Hello. Yes, sir. Hi, Neil. How you doing? Okay. Uh, listen, are you okay? What do you mean by that? How you been? I'm fine. How's it hanging? Great. To the left. To what the What can right? I do for you, sir? What's your uh, What's your material? Let's hear Is it. it. Hanging to the left. I don't have any material. Here's Miami. Hello. Miami. Last call of the day. Hi, Neil. Yes, Hato. sir. 
I don't know how to put up with these guys. Listen. See, they, they all think they're funny. This guy's not funny. He's not funny. He's not amusing. He's not interesting. He's not even annoying. He's just dumb. Go ahead, sir. I'm a first-time caller, and I finally got the nerve to call up because I think I got something to say without getting hung up on or uh, demeaned here. <laughs> anyway, um, I wanted to comment on the, deba- the debacle on, uh, <clears throat> on Saturday. I mean, who's running this city? W- what is going on? Um, you got, you know, three lanes shut down, and, and, and you know what it is, is. You got a bunch of Julios, you know, up there. And what does, it, what does the population do? They just talk about Castro, Castro, Castro. And when something like this happens, you know, they turn to road rage. Instead of doing some, something constructive, you yeah. know, something, you know, something smart, all we do is we bitch and moan, and then we go out and, you know, blow each other away on the streets, and that's it. That, that's that's the, the last straw in this town. Nobody wants to do anything constructive. Mm-hmm. So is that good enough? <laughs> Welcome to Miami, sir. <laughs> I've been living here for... Like uh, 15 years, I came here when I was 12, and you know New York isn't really a step up, but you know I didn't expect this. When I when I came here in, in 80, I got news for it. Peoria is a step up. <laughs> and you know people say, well, let's go to Orlando, 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 but let me tell you, in a few years, Orlando's gonna be another little Miami. That's where it's going. Okay. But that's all I got in the Orlando. I'll H- see you in Aintree. <laughs> Good talking to you. Take bye bye. Bye. Okay, that's the end of our calls for today. Thanks for uh, two hours and seven minutes of real uh, agony. It's been. I wish I could say it's been really delightful. But it hasn't. How come we're not hearing from anybody that's been in Vegas and seen the uh, the brand new, uh, what's the one that just opened, the Venetian? Opened a week ago? But Hey, listen, I realize it's Monday. You're, you're too busy doing other important stuff. I'm sitting here at noon in the middle of a show on a Monday without a single call on the board. Not one. Zero. Count them. This like, I got the same number of calls. Don't answer it. The same number of calls on the board now that George had people came out to see him on Saturday. Oh! The big O. That's this town, baby. The big O. Oh! Not the one you're thinking about either. Absolutely unbelievable. On the heels of last Thursday, this debacle that you people put forward. Just astonishing. It's amazing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start playing music. I'm serious. It's got to be an improvement over this. Talking to people who haven't got a goddamn thing to say, no matter what's going on in their town, they couldn't give a flying crap less. How is it possible to be walking around breathing the fresh air and have no opinion on anything? Nothing to say about anything. And then these idiots trying to be sit-down amateur comedians out there, you're about as funny as cancer of the kneecap. WQAM. Hey, how you doing, George? Neil calling. Yes. Oh, uh, hello, Neil. Anybody home? Uh, yes, sir. I'm up here in Jupiter, so it's a little bit dense. Yeah. Uh, listen, you just mentioned uh, the new uh, Venetian over in uh, Vegas. Yes, sir. Uh, I have a friend that lives out in Vegas, and he was there for the grand opening. And how was it? Uh, he said it was excellent. He said it was uh, wall-to-wall tuxedos and gowns. Uh, it was a beautiful night. He said it was better than Bellagio. Yeah, hey, uh, Bellagio doesn't do anything for me at all. I mean, it's big and it's beautiful, but it's 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 uh, it's just uh, I don't know, generic. It doesn't have any uh, identity of its own. He said the only good thing about Palacio is the uh, the fountains. They're all uh, synchronized for the yeah uh, yeah. If you like seeing water fishing, if that turns you on, and you love the Palacio. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just wanted to call and give you a spy report on Venetian. Thanks for the good news, sir. Thanks, Neil. God bless you. Five six seven. You can answer him now. I mean, you know, that was just a momentary thing. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on you there because I know you're very depressed after going all the way down there to Homestead. I don't want to mention which salesperson got involved in that, since I guess he's not supposed to be calling in that account. Wouldn't want to create any problems for that certain... Uh, yeah, so we'll blame it on... Roy! Because we know that... Uh, Roy! He never really sells any real account anyway. He's just a face man. We just stick him in there when it's convenient. See, oh, that's Roy's account. But at least George got paid for it, okay? He got paid for uh, nothing. That's good. I always said it's really great to get paid for nothing. Nine minutes after noon at 560 WQM. If you use a cell phone or you're thinking about getting one, Mobile One has got an offer you don't want to pass up. Well, why is he sticking his head in that door? I, you know it's something? Business. He's if, if, business. If you would have shut the door on his head right there, I would have paid you $1,000 cash. Peter Leonard, one of our sales assholes, sticking his head in the door. It's business for what? It's that copy we wanted so desperately. For what? For uh, that account. That's very outdated. What what letter does it begin with? B. That's his account? It is now. Well, what do you mean by that? It was John Penis's account last week. And he it was? Me, yes. And he told me they're all done for now. See, this, this sales department, it's unbelievable. Nobody even knows who's got what account. 
just like that uh, Todd Dreck giving me a song and a dance about the uh, that one thing, which I don't want to mention them because they're good friends of mine, and then they'll take that thing out of my house that they just put in. Oh, my God. What was I just saying with this real old copy that John Penis hasn't changed in four months? I was saying if you use a cell phone and you're thinking about getting one, Mobile One has got an offer you don't want to pass up. Mobile One is offering the new Ericsson digital cell phone, which is sleeker and smaller than most phones and valued at $199. Why are you airing shit like this? Way down in Jamaica in the Caribbean. They got the best herb that you ever seen. Ask anybody in that neighborhood. They tell you this the country where the country be good. Yes. Rasta man has some he want to sell. And from a mile away, you can detect the smell of smoke. Smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. He lights up the spliff and choke. Smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. Smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. The ganja be good. You can carry lots of herb in the gunny sack. Smoke it every day until your lungs turn black. All right. With all the money that we have made, yeah. Jamaica doesn't need any foreign aid. American tourists come here and say, got nothing like this in the USA. They smoke, smoke, got to smoke, smoke. They light up the spliff and choke. They begin to puff and choke. Smoke, got to smoke, smoke. The ganja be good. Oh! Mama tell her son you are a rock man. You like to smoke the giant slip whenever you can. Many people coming here from miles around to buy the herb from you by the ounce and the pound. Rasta man say to her, Mama, you're right. The ganja be good tonight. And then they smoke. <laughs> smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. Yeah. They light up the spliff and choke. Smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. Smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. The ganja be good. Oh, come on. 1217 at 560. And we have a fax here from the Libertarian Party. You know, why do they keep wasting our fax paper? I wouldn't care if the Libertarian Party were alerting us that we were 30 minutes away from having nuclear weapons dropped on our ass, okay? I still cannot stand. I will not deal with you. are a bunch of losers. You know the old expression, what if they gave a party and nobody came? They already did. It's called the Libertarian Party. That's uh, what that's all about. Waste of time, waste of our fax paper. Stop bothering us and stop wasting all these goddamn trees that need to be chopped down. Here's a mobile in the gables. Hello. Hi, Neil. I'd like to call somebody. Okay, last call of the day. Here it is. Here's West Miami. Hello. Hold on. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, listen. I want to ask you something. Hold on with what? What was that? Um, if if what was that? What? I'm confused now. Confused about what? About my sexuality. Uh huh. No kidding. WQAM. Hello. Yes, sir. Hi, Neil. I wanted to talk to you about. Sorry, you caught me eating. I didn't think you were That's okay. Ask. Well, you're, you're it. You're our only call. Oh. Your last call of the day, by the way, sir. I'm a first-time caller, too. Okay. okay. I wanted to talk to you about... I was listening to you. Never bothered to call. I just sit back and listen. But this weekend, I had a terrible experience in my church. My kids went to have their first communion. The priest was charging for tickets. Mm -hmm. So I went up there and asked him, why don't you sell me tickets for uh, Easter Sunday, uh... Ash Wednesday, all the other tickets. You owe me fifty dollars. He said, "Oh, we don't do that." And said, Why did you do this? He said, "It's a family thing. This is a family event, not a regular church event." Yeah. <laughs> so I said, "Oh, thanks a lot. Why don't you sell me absolution?" He said, "Now you're getting ridiculous." He said, "Now you're getting right down to it. How about twenty-five grand? Sounds good." <laughs> okay, well, it sounds like you're gagging on it, pal. So I'll spit it out. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the mobile one line. 
Here's a mobile in North Miami Beach. Hello. What's the word? Here's a Homestead. Hello. Hey, Neil, what's up? How you doing, sir? Listen, if Monica made all that all that money, you know, making all that money, going down on precedent, I mean, hey, I'll eat. Um, uh-huh, okay. Here's a, a mobile in Boca. Hello. Hey there, Neil. How you doing today? Okay. I hope another last call. Hey, uh, you go all over the place. Uh, how about the Caribbean? Are there any good uh, places to go there, like no. resorts? No. Nothing at all? No. You don't like it at all? Like what? What is there to like? What do you want to go to the Caribbean for? Because it's close, it's cheap. What do you want to go there for? Uh, gamble. Gamble, and you mean like in the Bahamas? Yeah, well, I don't oh, like the Bahamas. It's too flat. Yeah. I just figured down the what Caribbean. What does it make whether it's flat or not if all you want to do is gamble, sir? Flat, I think, is the operative word, as in your rectum. Here's a mobile in North Miami. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? Okay. Uh, went to Vegas for the first time on Monday. Got back Friday. Right. Uh, outstanding. I think it was a real nice place. Um, the Bellagio, uh, Venetia's not even done. I don't know why people are talking about the Venetia. Yeah, the Venetian opened last week. Yeah, but you can't see the pool area. It's not completed. You can't see the shops because that's not completed. The only thing that lets you see is the casino, the lobby. That's it. Right. Everything else is kind of taped off. Um, I like the fresh flowers in the Bellagio. I mean, I don't know if you've been, if you've seen all the fresh flowers they did in the lobby. And as you the walk fresh the, flowers? Yeah. They, you mean they, like they, pansies? They put, yeah, like... <laughs> Gladiolas and all oh, kinds gladiolas. of Oh, gladiolas. I love the gladiolas. Remember Little Darling by the gladiolas? That was one yeah, of my favorites. Yeah, exactly. And as you right. walk through different hallways, it smells like different flowers. Uh -huh. Not bad. Yeah. But, uh, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was okay. I mean, a fantastic place. I went to see Hoover Dam. And even, you know, even if you don't gamble, for people who just want to go and drive through the mountains, I mean, rent a car and kind of go to Hoover Dam. Sure as hell beats being here. Even a Herald discovered it's uh, more exciting than being here. Oh yeah, I mean it's well. The Herald's a joke. I mean they don't they don't know what's going on. I mean they, uh, but I but I did. I had a great time. Um, I don't know if you have a, a second. Just let me tell you a story. My girlfriend was completely uh, against gambling. You know she's like a, it's awful and terrible to waste that money. So she sits Why down is that? at a, is she a religious fanatic. Not fanatic, but she does believe that if you're going to throw your money away, you might as well give it to church and not to. Uh, oh machine. Jesus! Oh. Uh, I know. So, so, she sits, so she sits down at a nickel slot machine you know, yeah. at around 11.30 p.m. With, uh, with 15 cents in her hand. Well, she puts the last nickel in and hits 100 nickels. Oh! She, takes, she takes those 100 nickels, bucks. puts the next nickel in and wins 80 nickels. Yeah. So now she's hooked, right, like a fish. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So I go to the crab table. I come back at 4.30 in the morning, Neil. You know, she's still sitting at the slot machine. There you go. Yeah, so I guess religion uh, took a sidestep, you know what well, I mean? Thank God for that. All righty. So uh, it's a wonderful place. Thanks for the advice, and uh, I can't wait to go back. And God bless you. All right, bye. I'll see you at the MGM Grand. Okay, there's a guy who had a good time in Vegas. Oh. The Herald discovered they have a great time in Vegas, or even according to them, Biloxi or any place else where there's gambling and nightlife and all of these things. How do you like that? Isn't this amazing? This, is the, this can't be the same newspaper, can it be, that's been telling us about the evils of all of this stuff? Uh-huh. So evidently, it's great to spend all your hard-earned money just to go out there to go someplace where you can have a good time. Then you can come back here and be bored because that's the way the Herald wants it. You can go to see some goddamn stupid basketball game. God. And then I hear some jackass this morning on the on the uh, Joe and the uh, Bagel Boys show this morning talking about, well, you know, those people in Detroit, they uh, have more people go to the basketball games. They fill up all the seats because there's certainly so much more to do here than there is there. Oh, man. Oh, my God. All these people that think that there's so much to do here, you know, those must be the people playing golf. They have, they have to, and going to the sawgrass and cruising the tea rooms, that must be what they're doing. Here's a mobile in Del Rey. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, I was watching HBO this weekend, and uh, do you remember all the war we had back in the, the 60s and 70s, Vietnam? No. And did you refresh my memory. Well... <laughs> As I remember, it was a national disgrace, and, and we lost. Yeah. We lost the war, right. and we we, uh, we left with our tails between our legs. Um, Absolutely correct, sir. Yeah. Uh, and, and a lot of people died for no good reason. Correct. Uh, a lot of my friends. Well, uh, I've been watching uh, HBO, and they're they're showing movies, uh, showing uh, how we were winning over there. We won the war, yeah. And how we how we won the war, and I just <clears throat> I was just wondering. And just like the, Argentina won that war over Las Malvinas too. <laughs> I w I was just wondering uh, when that happened. Uh, and the South won the Civil War. On the, on and the, the British won the Revolutionary War, right? 
I guess it's just it's manipulation of the me of 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 our. Well, what, our what, you, what movie are you talking about? Well, there was a movie uh, Bat Twenty One, and then there was another movie that I turned on in the middle of about some guy uh, who was who was obsessed with with winning the Vietnam War, and he uh, he uh, com- commandeered the South Vietnamese troops towards the end uh, after the United States pulled out. And he beat uh, Ho Chi Minh and all this, that, and the other thing, and he died in a helicopter crash. But we would have won the war if, uh-huh. if that guy, if that guy had hadn't uh, died in a helicopter crash. And I'm just watching this stuff, and I'm saying, "Ball beep!" Uh, like, what are, are we are we showing? Uh, yeah. If Henry and, Kissinger would have had one less cheese blitzer, we would have won that war. I'm sure. Uh, oh, sure. There was nothing to it. I mean, uh, we we you know we were just a step away from winning it, and. Uh, and killing uh, more millions and millions of Bringing people. another 50,000 kids home in body bags, right. Hey, Neil, can I have a request? Yes, sir. Um, uh, he's a monkey. He's uh, I'm a monkey. He's a monkey. Okay. Thank you. See ya. What's that called, by the way? I'm a monkey? Monkey song. No. It's called a monkey song? Oh, okay. It's coming up. Oh, and see, you see what happened now? That happens to me all the time. Every time I'm going to do one of these Nick spots and i got to queue up one of these things, every time something comes in there and I wind up getting, uh, you know, lost. Don't blame the caller on that. Blame yourself. Okay, I did it, God damn it. Damn, oh God. It's caller's fault. 1226 at 560 WQM. You want to... Dead Burlider. All right. Oh, I'm a monkey, you're a monkey, she's a monkey, he's a monkey, we're all monkeys now. Yeah. I'm a monkey, you're a monkey, she's a monkey, he's a monkey, we're all monkeys now. Yeah. Swinging tree to tree, we scream and squawk and shout. No response to abilities, that's what we're all about. Oh. I'm a monkey, you're a monkey, she's a monkey, he's a monkey, we're all monkeys now. We don't do anything, we're told because we don't know how. Don't brush our teeth, don't comb our hair, we don't even wear clothes. We'll have to make you queasy with our violent parts exposed. I'm a monkey, you're a monkey, she's a monkey, he's a monkey, we're all monkeys now. We're not well-mannered, well-behaved, we just love to drop trowel. We'll do some tricks, we'll make you laugh until we are bad. Then we'll lay down, scratch our butts, and watch you all turn red. Oh, I'm a monkey, you're a monkey, she's a monkey, he's a monkey, we're all monkeys now. Yeah. We wouldn't want to be a dog, a cat, a horse, or cow. Are you? We're smelly, and we like it, and we've heard the things you said. So don't come within 10 feet of us, or we'll whiz on your head. Oh, I'm a monkey, you're a monkey, you're a monkey, you're a monkey, we're all monkey now. I'm a monkey, you're a monkey, you're a monkey, you're a monkey, we're all monkey now. We're a monkey, you're a monkey, you're a monkey, you're a monkey, you're a monkey. You know what I think he's really trying to say? Yeah. Yeah. 1232 at 560 WQM. Look at that. Little Joey is on the phone. We haven't heard from him in about uh, 10 years. How's it going, Uncle Neil? Okay. Unbelievable. Takes two days to get back from Vegas to remind you of what a crap hole town we live in. Right. What a cesspool. God. What a suckhole place this is, right? Unbelievable. What a low-life, no-brain, lame-ass, dead-ass place. People think that the United States ends by Disney World. You were in Vegas last week? I just got back Saturday. Where'd you stay? At Treasure Island. That's okay. I was walking right across the street to the Rosewood Grill. Great great location, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's at the, but I, it's towards the northern end of the strip from where all the new stuff is. But Yeah. So did mean, you see the new stuff? Did you go see the Venetian? I was there for the Venetian's opening. Really? Yep. Unbelievable. Yeah. Was it good? I mean, my wife liked it. Yeah. I mean, I... I to me, How is your lovely wife, by the way? She's uh she's getting ready to uh, count down the days for school to end because she's getting tired of those brats. No. Oh. But besides that, she's uh she feels real good after coming back from Vegas, so... <laughs> Yeah. She feels much happier than I did. She came back winning, so. Oh, I see. Her winnings offset my losses. So. Well, that's not bad. That's good. We actually came back with $10 more than of course, we did. what are you with. worried about? You know, a drug peddler like you, you don't have to worry about that stuff. No, I know, but I mean, if there was a moral victory to come back ahead on. One thing about your business, anybody that's selling prescription drugs, they never have to worry that's going to be like a dying business. You're always going to be in business. No, no, and there's more. The population is getting older, so. Uh huh, especially here. Oi! The only bad part of the trip was the flight out there. 
we're, we're, now don't tell me you went on America Worst. Yes, sir. You went on America Worst the non, Airlines? The non-stop, oh, yeah. the non-stop with no meal. I'd rather stop 16 times than ever oh. fly America Worst again. They should only croak. They should take the BGs, the whole bunch of them, and uh, take a dump. Oh. I mean, I, for five I'm hours. Fly America worst again. I, you know, I do love. I, you know me. I like nonstop direct. But in this case, I'll make an exception. Just this one time, I'll make an exception. I'd rather stop, you know, twice and get there some other time. Even though we got there, you know, at like ten o'clock Vegas time, but still. Yeah, but you know the interesting part about that, you can fly American, for example. Just as I mean, Delta goes there too. But like, you can fly American from Miami to through Dallas. And you leave like at uh, 3.30 in the afternoon, and you you get it. It's like a seven-hour deal all the way together, so it's 10.30 our time. So you get there at 7.30 at night. Well, I got there at 10.15. Uh, well, that's, the so, uh, that, that's my point. That's my point is uh, you get there at 7.30, even though you have to make a stop. Well, I, trust me, I was really... American, by the way, the food is great, even uh, though we are pissed off about their uh, pilots and all that crap. But nevertheless, American, I mean, how can you make the comparison? I don't know. But... American's a real airline. America worst is uh, horrendous. That was the worst five hours of my life. Unbelievable. Maybe someday you'll get take your lovely wife and go on Virgin Atlantic and go to uh, across the other direction. Yeah, that she's dying to go in the other That's direction. That's a great. That's a great airline. Ugh. And you could afford it. I'm sure I can. Even a schlepper like you could afford it. Unbelievable experience. And that what the new one I wanted to go see but hadn't finished it was the Paris. Right. That's uh, opening in September. September is what they September. told me. Now, did you go to Mandalay Bay? Yes, sir. How's that? Unbelievable. Really? Ugh. They just, uh, I wanted, they, the only thing I didn't get into, I wanted to go by the, uh, by the patio, by the pool patio, and they have that lagoon out there, but you have to be a, a guest of the hotel, but oh, no, no, what hotel is that that's in the uh, Mandalay Bay, the, um, the Four Seasons? Four Seasons, that's right. Where right. they have, they have a hotel within a casino, it's yep. unbelievable. It's, I mean, it, it, un, when I just walked in there, I just was like in awe, so. And that's, that's like the last hotel on the strip on the south end, so. Right. But still. And it's not even sinking yet. No, it's not, it, <laughs> Perfect out there. Right. Okay, Joey, good to hear from you. Uh, call us again someday if you ever uh, get real bored. I will. Okay. Take care. See ya. Bye. Little Joey, there he is. They just came back from Vegas. Oh! Oh, you like that? Him and his very beautiful wife. You've met his wife, haven't you? I don't remember. Oh, oh, come on. You wouldn't forget his wife. You never met her. I never met her. She she makes Britney Spears look like uh, Mama Cass. Maybe he'll That's how lovely. Pictures. No, that's probably why he's keeping her away from you. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the mobile one line. See, there's another story. Somebody went to Vegas, had a great time. I understand that I'm just a sourpuss telling the truth here on the radio every goddamn day, and it's not very uplifting to have somebody tell the truth about what a suckhole place this is because we got a bunch of politicians and a bunch of newspaper people here and lie through their teeth, and then all of a sudden out of nowhere, yesterday they decided, hey, Vegas is great, Biloxi is great. Although don't go there on a bus. Man, oh, man, this just amazes me how you people just take all this. Man, we must have about two million Peter Claytons down here. You know what I mean by that? They must like to eat morning, noon, and night. Yeah, they must love it because the sure there's no shortage of it here. God, what a place this is. Yeah, Peter Clayton, the great restaurant critic, his favorite dish was a l'orange. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the mobile one line. Oh, the evils of casinos. We sure don't want to have all of that here. No, we want the French Canadians. We want the uh, old farts. That's our idea of tourism down here. The cheapest miserable bastards that no, that nobody any place else will take. That's what we get. We get the dregs. We don't even get the dreck. We just get the dregs. We didn't want spring break. We don't like seeing too many young people around all at the same time. It's threatening for the old farts. They don't like that. Here's Miami Shores. Hello. Vegas report number three. Yes, sir. Just got in last night. All right. <laughs> you would think. Now, what, what airline did you fly? Please don't tell me America worst. Uh, well, I took Delta, and it still took me over 10 hours. 10 hours? Yeah, I got, got bumped off in Dallas, Fort Worth. I mean, they suck. You no, think, you're right. Delta does suck. Amen. You would think from the fifth busiest airport to the tenth busiest airport, there'd be more than one damn flight to get you out there. Right. But so that part always sucks getting there. You're right. Anyway, the Bellagio. That guy was talking about. They have an indoor arboretum, and if you're into arboretums, I mean, it's very elegant inside. I mean, yeah, I've, I've been in there. At the Bellagio. Yeah. I was in there last November. It was. Oh, I didn't know it was open yeah. last November. And the Venetian. It. 
they just opened the casino, the hotel. I'll tell you, there's an interesting story for that hotel. The owner of that is one of the tribesmen, and Steve Wynn and Kikorian, they treat him as an outsider, so they give him a real hard time getting this place. He was supposed to be open several months ago, mm -hmm. but um, he's having a lot of problems getting his final inspections and Oy. permits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so they're... So the only part that was open was the casino and the hotel lobby. They said it would still be like a month before they get the shops open and the rest of the uh, tower. But supposedly, when I was talking to one of the uh, managers there, they said the owner's going to double the size of it again next year and build a complete another wing that mirrors. Jesus the Christ! Yeah, I mean it's, it's man. You know, it's something else. It's mind-boggling. Yeah. Did you see those water fountains in front of the Bellagio? Yes, I did, yeah. That's pretty amazing. If you're into uh, watching a lot of water pissing around, man, that'll do it for you. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, what can I say? It's always good to get out of town. Went by the Mandolin Bay. That's very... I'll tell you, I'm surprised when you go out, you don't stay at the Bellagio instead of the MGM. Why is that? Well, it's a little bit more elegant, don't you think? Yeah, it, it's elegant, but it's just, I don't know, it doesn't have any... It doesn't have any flavor, you know? I mean, Bellagio, I thought it was going to be like real Italian because I love Italy and... It, it, it's very because it's brand new. It's it's sparkling and uh, but it just seemed generic to me. It didn't have any kind of atmosphere. It's Bellagio. I didn't even know it's supposed to be Italian. I thought it was more French. You know, with the no. old, with the ornate uh, tables and no, there. not at all. It's supposed to be an Italian thing. And that's supposed to be like Lake Cuomo, the uh, thing in front there. Well, well, the Venetian is. Much, it looks more like Mario Cuomo. Yeah, right. Well, the Venetian is definitely going to be much more Italian whenever. Whenever they and then they opened up a whole new I don't know a whole new wing of I, I yeah. just I just like the MGM I mean maybe uh, I've stayed in a lot of other places I just happen to like it I have no complaints they give you beautiful rooms the room service is sensational yeah. the food is great and I just I'm very comfortable plus being on the corner there it's just easy when you rent a car yeah it's a lot easier to get from there to any place else as opposed to being there in the middle of the strip and like, like Caesars I love Caesars but I would never stay there because you can't get in and out of there well I'm a poor schlepper but I stay on the four corners I stay on the cheap side I stay at the Tropicana. Right. There's I'll nothing tell, wrong with that. I'll tell you what. They give you a nice big size room in there. It cost me 60 bucks a night. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. I've stayed there. There's nothing wrong at all with the trough. And, and it's in a good location right on the four corners. Right. There, so. Okay. Hello, Glad you had a great time. Okay. Take care. Delta's ready when somebody is, but not yeah, us. Not, not okay. me or you. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Delta ain't ready. We're always ready, and Delta just says, No. 1241 at 560 QM. There's a great shoe store in Pompano Beach. Brandy. Tom Jekka. Would you just pass along to Neil and Mail? But the reason I called was that I thought maybe you could help me out. I've been trying to get those goddamn ratings. Duff Lindsay's gone home sick. Josh Darrow says he doesn't have the authority to give them to me. You know, call Greg Reed. I couldn't get him. So, you know, and then the, the last number they gave me was to call you. If somebody would get me the goddamn ratings, I'll, I'll pay the king his homage. Anyway, I'm only kidding, but... Yeah, that that is the problem, and I do want to do a story on mm -hmm. it, and I'm just having trouble getting it. So yeah. I'll talk to you. Okay, about. thanks, Tom. Tom Jickey, who would like to write a story about the goddamn rating book that WQM had this not just this show, the morning show, Joey and the Bagel Boys, and the afternoon show, Big Fat Hank. Everybody I used to be big fat, not so fat anymore. Everybody on his station except at night, of course. Maybe that's why he's taking so long to write this story. Because we know who, uh, you know, he's, he's close with uh, some of the other people on the station that hang out at the track together. But you know who he's the tightest with on his station? I'm talking about that geek Tom Jicka. Where the hell is it? He's real tight with... Uh... Ed Kaplan! Yeah. And, of course, nighttime, which don't blame Ed Kaplan for that. It's just that we had all those Panther games on there. Right? January, February, March, we had a lot of Panther stuff on there, which uh, anybody can listen to that when they're all on TV. When they can watch Jem, uh, Je Jeb Rimmer and Denise Potvin, are they going to listen to a Christina Moron on the air? No. Of course not. By the way, we picked a new Panthers announcer for next year yet? No. If the Penguins wind up leaving Pittsburgh, by the way, let's uh, bring Mike Lang down here, whether he wants to come down or not. Of course, if we brought Mike Lang down to do the Panther games on a radio, somebody who does the games on TV might start getting a little bit paranoid. I don't want to mention no names, okay? Okay? Okay. Okay. My good, close, personal friend. Here's the Miami Beach. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Okay, Neil. I just moved here from Ohio about a month ago. I've been to every state in this country, and this this has got to be the worst. <laughs> I've been to every state except Hawaii and Alaska. This has oh, to be Hawaii the worst. is great, man. I've been to Hawaii six times. It's great. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm, the money. I'm, I'm only 23. I don't have the money for that yet. Right. But uh, I know why you don't have any callers. 
No one speaks English in this town. Right. This is just amazing. I, I'm just yeah, flabbergasted. Isn't it astonishing that I do as well as I do in the ratings when you consider that we have nobody that speaks English here? It's got what you got a couple million people here, and probably half of them don't speak a, a word of there English. Are, there are 73 people in South Florida who speak English. <laughs> I, I go to the gas station, and the guy's trying to. He's, he's speaking uh, da these Spanish numbers. I don't know what he's saying. Yeah. You know, so I, you can't communicate. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's amazing. Mama la pinga. That's all I know here, man. That's, that's their uh, repertoire. But uh, about Britney Spears. Yeah. I heard a report on MTV this week, and I saw a little little thing on their now, news. Please don't tell me about her uh, boobs being... No, no, uh, no, uh, no. It's about her age. 17. They say she's 26. Is she? They, that's what they said. So this whole thing is a big scam? You know how they lie about people's ages. They yes, lie about actors' ages. Right. They're like Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm, I was 21. He's 17. Now he's older than me. He's it 48. Yeah, 48. exactly. That's what I'm saying. And it's that's it's, like it's a butterfly. Scam. So uh, I think she's older than 17, though, just by the way she looks. Yeah, but would you do her? Yeah. In a heartbeat. Even if she was 17. Even if they're not real. Okay, pal. <laughs> All right, see you. Have a great day. Bye. There's a guy. Oh, thank God for him. There's our best call of the year so far. Are you living and breathing? First, of course, he's only been here a short time. Wait another month or two. He'll be going Boy. like that. Yeah. See, we have a lot of people, when they came here, they were really fine, wonderful, uh, living and breathing people. And they spent a few months here, and Boy. they become real old real fast. He's 23. Next month, he'll be 83. He'll be eating at the Rascal House. That's what this town will do to you, man. Look at me. Look at me. I'm only 25, going on 100. No, actually, you know something? I'm pretty young for down here. I really am. I look, you know, I, I look in the mirror, and even though it's not a pretty sight, it's uh, I don't change. You know, I'm the same fat, old, ugly piece of crap now that I was. I'd say the last. I could easily pass for 55. <laughs> No, seriously, I, if I said I was 48, am I right? I could be 48. You haven't changed. I'm, I'm like generic, which is frightening. I'm generic. I mean, uh, you know, like that. Every morning when I'm shaving, I look in the mirror, I go, yeah. but, but it's generic kind of like, yeah. you know, as opposed to a specific, like Sam Rosen, who does the Ranger game. Now, Sam's a good guy. He was on the Fox uh, yesterday doing one of the games. But, I mean, Sam, Jesus, God, he could be the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life, especially when he turns sideways. Don't, don't do the profile on Sam Rosen, please. I mean, talk about Jewish noses. Sam, I beg you, just keep looking straight ahead. Don't look at the color guy, whoever that guy is. And who the hell was that guy on with him yesterday? Which game was that? That was the Boston Buffalo game? Pretty good game, by the way. Nice going there, Sabres. Oh! I noticed a few empty yellow seats there in the uh, Fleet Enema Center, by the way. All you Bruins fans, what is wrong with these people, huh? They got a real nice team this year. They're exciting. They got that famous Amos Carter and Pat Burns with his new haircut. Here's Miami Springs. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Neil's Neil. Speaking. I'm a 38-year-old uh, kid, and I speak All right. English. All right. Here's, like I said, 74 people down here that speak English. I'm one of them. I'm one of the 73 that are left. Anyway, Neil, I don't know if you caught uh, CNN yesterday. They had a report from Moore, Oklahoma. Yeah. And they were interviewing uh, a minister. And out of his word, out of his mouth, I'm sorry, he said the tornadoes were not an act of God. Right. They were an act of nature. God only does the good stuff. Nature does bad stuff, but when it's good stuff, like somebody gets miraculously saved, then God done it. Right. I thought he was uh, omnipotent. Well, only one uh, alternate weekdays. I see. And another thing, I know you I think don't... he's omnisexual. Uh, could be in. Another thing, I know you're not into Chadivity Ball. That's Spanish for coon ball. But uh, is that unbelievable? They could not sell the 15,000 tickets. Oh, you just said coon ball. I didn't understand. Oh, coon ball, yeah. Oh, coon ball, yeah. Right. I call it in Spanish. Wasn't that a song, Kumbaya? Kumbaya is the same right, thing. Right, I remember that. I call it Chadivity Ball. Yeah. That DVD is cool. <laughs> and? And they could not sell 15,000 tickets for a playoff game. Yeah. And yet, I bet there's over 15. Yeah, but don't, you're forgetting there just aren't that many people with cell phones yet. True. As soon as all the other ones get the cell phones, they'll pack that joint. Oh, okay, yeah. Just like the Jamaicans, they know how to pack that joint. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, man. I bet you do. Okay, have a great day, pal. All right, later. And, uh, watch out for that coon ball. I like that. That's interesting. I like the National Baboon Association better, though. I, you know, it's it's a sport for black dudes, okay? That's what the NBA is. There's no, the guy had a couple of guys get all upset on Friday about that. What's wrong with having your own thing? 
Don't you remember that song? It's my thang. I mean, they couldn't spell it right, but at least that was the general idea. It's my thang. Let it alone already, will you? It's my thang. It's like these white rap artists, okay? I mean, as much as I hate rap music to begin with, but everybody's entitled to have their own illiterate stuff, whatever it might be. But it's that's for the brothers that are rap music. Stop it. I can't stand the white guys doing rap music, which if I could tell you one, I would name. Oh, by the way, Sugar Ray. You know who Sugar Ray is? What is he besides pretty damn hot? What is his story? Mixed bag. Yeah, he's uh, yeah, he's a little, he's got a little something in him. Rectum. Well, I don't know about that, but he's sure yeah, a little multicultural. Like this. Maybe he's like a little Rican, you think? Sugar Ray. Somebody in this audience will call and tell us about Sugar Ray. See, when you start watching MTV, what? They got to do something about that celebrity uh, death watch or whatever the thing is. Celebrity, what is it? Death, death match. match. They got a big hit. Oh, yeah, it's a big hit, of course. Listen, if they had snuff films on there, too, it would be a big hit. I mean, what kind of crap is that? Pat Sajak and uh, and uh, Alex Trebek over and over again. And he keeps, you know, he takes out the goddamn branding iron and he brands the thing on his forehead. And then they then they put him in that uh, thing and the, the, the uh, thing, the tampon comes down or whatever that is and tamps on him. Isn't that what they call a tampon, I think? Uh-huh. No strings attached. And then all the blood starts gushing out of him. And then Pat Sajak thinks he's the winner, and they stick his head in the wheel. And it just keeps chopping all his body parts off. And the kids are going, all right. Yeah. And the guy comes back, MTV, more TV violence. And then, like I said, half an hour later, they come out with a PSA about be nice to everybody, and isn't this terrible? And then, uh, you know, here's a mobile in Tamarack. Hello. Hello. How yes, sir. You? Great. Came back to Vegas. All right, another one. Yeah, took the whole family out there. Right. Twelve of us stayed at the MGM. Twelve of you? Twelve of us. Kids, the whole nine yards. They had a great time. There's so many things for them to do out there. You right. Know, the arcades, the pools. Yeah, they know. got a whole arcade at the MGM Grand. They've got everything, but they got fast food for the kids so that they can eat it, you know what I mean, and move on, you know. they got the pools, which is just a co- the whole place is a comedy to get in and out of. You know what I mean? For the yeah, kids, for I the, agree. For the yeah, mean, the, the, M, the MGM is one of those places where if you wanted to, I mean, I'm, I'm not that kind of a person that I want to stay in one place in Vegas because I like to get out and you know, get all over the strip. But, I mean, if you just wanted to go in there and never even leave the whole time you were there, you could easily do that. You can eat, drink, and be merry in that place. Right, eat, drink, and make merry. <laughs> exactly. Went over to the Grand Canyon for the day, you know, right. saw that. That was a nice little treat for the kids. And then came back and did a lot of gambling, you know, so... Uh, I recommend it. Don't now, now what Delta. airline did you fly? Delta, Delta. And a quick story. Boy. On the way out, um, generator one goes on the way out. On the way back, <laughs> an engine blows in the air. Really? Fire comes out. And oh, my God. And then evidently somebody saw it and said that it kicked right back in again. But they turned, it, turned us around, landed us. We wound up waiting two hours um, just to be totally humiliated by their staff. You know what I mean? And then finally they put us on American Airlines and we finally, we got home. Oh. Yeah, but you know what? It was, you know, when you get out there, it's just so enjoyable. You know, the kids enjoy it and uh, uh, the lights are flashing at 5 o'clock in the morning. The right. time changes, so you know what? You have a good time. Oh, now, now what time did you get there? We flew out at 6.45 in the morning on Monday. Oh, so you got there in the daytime. We were there at 11 o'clock. You know, the see, I, see, what I love is getting there at night. Flying, There's nothing to me like flying into Vegas at night, and you're starting to get close, and from the distance you see the light, you know, the lights of the strip. Right. Man, that's just right. the best. Right. Yeah, I think we'll do that the next time because there will be a next time. It's just too much fun, you know. You, you come you back bet. here, and it's, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> have, a great, have a great life, pal. Thanks, buddy. See ya. See, all of these people, you think they're making it up? Is that it? Uh-huh. They're just making it up for the goddamn Chamber of Commerce or something? Even the, uh, now, who wrote this? Jay Clark, the Herald Travel Editor. He must have sneaked this in here yesterday in the paper. You know, that Sunday paper is 80 pounds of advertising anyway, and they got so much crap in there, they probably don't even see half of what gets away. When the Herald editors see this, they're going to say, oh, boy, that's the end of Jay Clark, whoever the hell he is. He must be a communista. Because he writes this glowing thing, the new crop of luxurious Vegas resorts creates a fantasy land where one can hop around the globe in a single day. And about the Venetian and the Bellagio and about uh, the uh, Paris, which opens in September, and this one and that one, and on it goes. I mean, the most glowing stuff. Yesterday in the travel section, by the way, it's got all kinds of phone numbers. You know what I'm going to do tomorrow? I'm going to bring in the, um, they have 800 numbers that you can call. For if you want to make reservations out there and they handle it. And, and a lot of times you get a better rate from those, uh, what do they call those things? Where they have rooms from all the different hotels. They have a word for that, consolidator or something like that. 
But I'll just bring in those 800 numbers because I know we have a lot of people in this audience that like to go to Vegas. You know, uh, just because I got those great big hotel books, thanks to my good close friend, Bob Lincoln, oh! which I'm running out of that, uh, those, uh, what, uh, what, Dr. Atkins stuff, the oil, uh, the fish oil stuff, which I take uh, six yeah. of those every day, by the way. What? Vitamins, yeah. Right, my Atkins vitamins, the fish oil supplements. I just mentioned that in passing, Bob Lincoln, since I'm giving you a nice plug. Did I give him a plug? No. Well, it sounded like it. Two packages while he's uh, packing them up. Right. Twelve two pack? I'm not into two pack. How's he doing by the way? Oh. Won't see him no more. Kinda like Polly. Remember Polly Girl? Twelve fifty seven at five sixty WQM. I don't I don't know. I'm incoherent because I'm hearing these people all had such a great time and I'm here. And I feel bad for a lot of you people out there. We got a lot of good people here, but we're all stuck here in this crap hole. Hey, if your carpets look like a crap hole, do yourself a favor and call the experts at Dry Concepts. WQM, we got the Hank Goldberg Show from Shula Stake 2 at 2 o'clock. Jim Mad Dog Mandich, yes! 6 o'clock tonight, and they lead in to 935. The Marlins in San Diego. Any? No. Okay. Hey, they won a series against Los Angeles. Any? No. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. We've got a lot of very happy campers who've been out in Vegas recently. Over the years, I've talked to two morons who uh, had negative things to say about Vegas. One of them, you can tell by the sound of his voice, he could have been in paradise, with a paradise, and still not had a good time. And uh, the other one was a guy that if he would have won $50 million in the lottery, he would have wanted to know uh, how come he had to pay so much tax. But other than that, here's a mobile in Hollywood. Hello. Yeah, the problem was they didn't know what to do with a paradise. Uh-huh. Huh? Neil, I, I was in Vegas in one of these local joints. Yeah. And I'm playing blackjack, and I look to the left of me, and who do I see? Weaver, the weatherman. Really? <laughs> that was the funniest thing. And I'm tell, trying to tell the dealers that he's someone. And I'm saying, Weaver, the weatherman, and they're laughing their asses off. Yeah. Because it seems it's so ridiculous to call a man Weaver, the weatherman. Who just, he's they, a good guy, though. He is a great guy. He does a lot of good things for uh, for pet uh, for pet rescue and uh, right. and a homeless. Uh, He's the best. Anyway, uh, also outside. He's Vegas, the kind of guy that deserves to be out there plunging his brains in Vegas, having a great time. He does. He's had enough adversity in his life. Right. Um, as far as uh, Vegas, uh, on the outskirts of Vegas, there is so much to do. We were. Uh, I I uh, was on a roller coaster at the Prima Donna. It's about 15 miles outside of Vegas. It's the tallest. Uh, roller coaster, they say in the country. It's about mm-hmm. 250 feet tall. It towers over all the hotels. Uh, and the outskirts of Vegas, there's just so much to do. You go up into Red Rocks, uh, up in the mountains. I mean, it's, it's paradise. Yeah. It's a, it's a beautiful place to go. Anybody, hear, that, anybody that goes there and doesn't ride a car is really missing out. Exactly. I mean, there's so much to see. Like I said, the, the, you got, uh, the, the dam. I mean, it's, it's great. I never yeah. got out, you ever get out to Laughlin? No. No. And well, one day I'm going to go out there. But for people who are wondering what it's like out there, it's it's really phenomenal. You should everyone should try it once if you can afford it. Amen. Take care, Neil. You too. Bye. 
Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Well, hey, listen, the Herald got everybody whipped up about Vegas. We're trying to put the finishing touches on it. If we just had an airline, somebody told me months ago on this show about that national airline or whatever it was supposed to be, and they were going to fly nonstop direct from Miami and Fort Lauderdale to Vegas and bada beep, bada beep. Did it ever happen? No. Have we ever heard any more about it? No. Well, why the hell not? I, I just don't get it. There have got to be an enormous number of people flying from the uh, – what about Atlanta? Do they fly for, uh, direct nonstop from Atlanta to Vegas, do you think? You would think so. It's a major hub. Yeah, see, see, that's the problem. Atlanta is a major hub. The only thing that we're a hub for besides <laughs> crap is like uh, Latin America. So, like, if you want to fly, like, American to Buenos Aires to uh, anywhere in Latin America, then no problem. You've got a lot of flights. But if you want to fly, like, in uh, like into real America, like uh, anywhere that you might want to go someday, uh, forget it. Here's Coral Gables. Hello. Dr. Rogers. Yes, sir. How are you? Great. Uh, I am... Um... I'm white and I like the NBA and I love basketball. And speak English. And um, I speak okay English. My bonics is okay. Um, I speak fluent Hebrew and I, I still love it. Oi. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I'd like to. Uh, there was a debacle on Saturday with the Heat. I I just want to do a short prayer for tonight. Barhu, I and I have a rock. Please join me. Marei pri Thank you. Hello, 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 hello. And I share kiddush on a mitzvah tov. Um, the Ahafta Etanai. And Kaksa Hoyes. Ooh, wonderful. Um, I'm going to take a long hit, so I will... Uh, okay, good luck to you. <laughs> okay, give it to Pat Riley. Pass it along. It couldn't hurt. Couldn't hurt. There you go. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. I think what he's really trying to say is he lost his ass $50. on that game the other day. Don't be betting on ball games, okay? That's what I'm trying to tell all you kids out there, like Don Cherry would say, all you kids out there... <laughs> Quit banging on that new plexiglass there at the Air Canada Center. You're going to bust a pain. You're going to bust a move. Uh, too bad. No penalty. Too bad. Ladies and gentlemen, the Penguins have just left the building. Okay, it's 108 at 560 WQAM. Hey, it's one of those things, okay? So they had a crappy non-call. Too bad. Too bad. Kevin Constantine sitting there with his mock applause. Too bad. We'll take the two points any way we can get it, or in this case, the uh, win in the play, whatever it is now. The two points. How do you like that? My mind and my brain is still back in a regular season. Like I said, after 32 years, you'll take anything. Hey, if you want to get something like a new appliance or electronic piece of equipment and your wallet keeps saying no, no. because of those outrageous prices, get yourself into appliance TV for one of the three. Food can't keep his pecker in his pants. My anus. My anus. Oh. My anus. 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 My anus, my anus, my anus. Hi, kids. Hi. Y'all like cutting little stinkers? Uh-huh. That funny little yeah. sound that comes right out your sphincter? <laughs> Want to copy me and do exactly like I do? Uh-huh. Get paid for writing little songs about boo-boo? My brain's all gone. I'm trying to get my groove on. But I can't figure out which spice girl I'm going to fart on. Ooh. And Dr. Dre asks, Yo, man, you pass gas? Hell no. So why do I smell ass? Man, you low class. Well, since age 12, it seemed like I always smelled. I thought ripping gases and tooting was pretty swell. I got pissed off when I took my jeans off and fought it so hard it turned my underwear backwards like crisscross. And every night I'm like, oh, dinner last. Then fun out my ass faster than a fat bitch you ain't too fast. Smell this, honey. Yo, wait a minute, that's my girl, cuz. I don't give a f- God sent me to stink the world up. My anus. My anus. My anus. Shady. Hi. For one second. Hi. My name is Slim Shady. 
Hi, kids. Do you like primates? Want to see me stick nine inch nails through each one of my eyelids? Copy me and do exactly like I did? Try sitting and get messed up where some of my life is? Brain said, wait, trying to get my head straight. Can't figure out which spice girl I want to impregnate. Dre said, Shady, you a base head. Uh uh. Why's your face red? You wasted. What's in stage 12? I felt like a cage self who said to himself on the shelf, chasing the tail. Got ticked off and ripped Pamela's lips off. Kissed him and said, I ain't no silicone with this stuff. My anus. My anus. My anus. My English teacher wanted me kicked out back in junior high. Said the problem was something crawled up my ass and died. I shot him in the face with my vapor. What happened later when I covered his desk with used toilet paper? Walked in the strip club, my intestines were filled up. Moved the bobcat and took a dump of the tip. So I just got the piss out and crashed, fall in the grass. Faster than the fat man who sat down too fast. Come here, lady. Yo, that's my girl, Kyle. I don't give a damn. Trace sent me to kick off the world. Hi. My name is what? My name is who? My name is. Slim Shady. Hi. My name is. Hi. My name is. What? My name is. Slim Shady. Hi. My name is. What? My name is. Who? My name is. Slim Shady. Hi. My name is. Hi. My name is. What? My name is. Slim Shady. Went over to a tent that had a bump in a garter. She lifted a leg up, and I knew she was a farter. 99% of my life I was lied to. I just found out my mom got more gas than I do. I told her I'd grow up to be a famous rapper. Make a record about strange noises made on the crapper. You know you were dirt when the women rush to leave. You try to hold it back, but you must need it relief. Here, ha. Thanks a lot. Next semester, I'll be 35. Smacked him in his face and then he raised her, chasing with a stapler. Told him to change the grade on the paper. Walked in the strip club, my jacket zipped up. Served the bartender and walked out with a tip cup. Extraterrestrial, running over pedestrians. Spaceship screaming, let's be friends. 99% of my life, I was lied to. Found out my mom does more dope than I do. Told her I'd grow up to be a real famous rapper. Make a record about doing drugs and name it right after her. You know you blew up when the women rush your stands. Try to touch your hands like some screaming usher fans. This guy at White Castle has my autograph. Can I get your so autograph? So I signed it. Dear Dave, thanks for the support, Hi. asshole. Hi. My name is what? My name is who? My name is Slim Shady. Hi. My name is how? My name is what? My name is Slim Shady. This guy at White Castle said it was pretty cool. But I had to go. Go drop the kids off at the pool. My anus. 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 Thank you. Okay, 118 is 560 QM. God, was that a production or what? Uh, that killed some uh-huh. real good time. 567 oh, 560, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Here's uh, Pembroke Pines. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Today's paper, uh, our brother Terry Murray once again has lost. Yeah, I saw that. And he says it's just saw a... Ray fu- Whitney got to go for the uh, Canadian team, by the way. Oh! If anybody cares about that. That's right. Team. Hey, I saw something on one of them cable channels the other day about the Rio uh, yeah. there in Vegas. Yeah, I hate it. No? No good? Not for me. I, I mean, uh, other people like it. I hate it. Okay. Well, Terry Murray. Sucks. Okay, 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. I need a little help there at the end, and I, uh, you know, gave him a little assistance. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. How are you doing today? Great. Hey, if you play that Sims Lady version twice a day, you're only in office for two hours instead of four. You that's, know that? that's what I'm thinking. Hey, listen. Uh, on Monday. Yeah, your pal, or Tuesday or Wednesday. Any day that ends in Y. But listen, uh, are you on a speakerphone or some kind of a crappy instrument or what? No, I'm on a I'm on a cell phone. Oh, and that's better. Uh, is that better? Now that you took your head out of that big barrel, it's a lot better. I just I just came out of the closet. Okay. I but, uh, no, agree. I just came back from Vegas. Um, gotta kind of disagree with you on America Worst. Everything was smooth. Left on time. Got there on time. 
Uh, and I even brown nosed my way up to first class. It was a great flight. You know something? And, uh, I, first class on America Worth is like flying cargo on any other airline. Well, it was, it was good for you, me. It, I drank it was, for it was free. nice and comfortable. You had a little leg room. Food was real good. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was fine. <laughs> it was okay. fine. And I used to work for an airline. I mean, I used to work for uh, an airline. I used to fly non ref first class with them all the time. It was, it was, it was all I right. You thought America Worst was a good airline? No, I said it was all right. Oh, it was all right. It was all right. But, yeah. for, you know, going up, that, up once and down once is better than up and down twice, I think. It was nonstop. It's all so depending on what you're going up and down on, I guess. Good point. Good point. And another thing, I stayed at the Rio. I strongly disagree with you about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know you never. Well, I know a lot there. of people that like the Rio, and I don't know what it is, what the attraction is. It's way out of the way, and uh, they treat you like crap in there. And I had a very rude experience. Oh, I got rated. They rated me good. The seafood buffet was good. I mean, yeah. I, I can't. And the suites, you know, I went. In the, I had friends out there. I went in the uh, Mirage. I wasn't too crazy about the Mirage, and that Mandalay Bay wasn't all that either. I thought. Right. The rooms. What about the but, MGM? Uh, uh, the MGM is just too big. I just didn't get a good vibe in there. It's, it's like a city within a yeah, city. Yeah, that's true. The Rio, Rio Suites is like a uh, telephone booth. That's how small the casino is. Well, it ain't like the MGM. No. Jeez. I like hey. big. Well, uh, anyway, you know, like I said, the worst day in Vegas is still the best day here. Amen. That's God good. bless you, sir. Hey, can I make a, a request? Yes. Can you call, uh, can you play that uh, Dick's Big Deck? Dick's Big Deck, okay. <laughs> Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. We got six hundred open lines now. Thank God we got that Vegas thing in yesterday's paper. Thank you, Adam. That makes up for the time you cut that bed in the uh, turlet downstairs. Oh man, he had a real bad movement on that one day. And of course, I hate to bring that up again, a sore point. But that was uh, special. It was like seventeen little uh, grotesque animals, alien animals, died in one place. So now he made up for it. I'll never mention it again, Adam, until the next time. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's a, a mobile in Sunrise. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, uh, long time, first time. All right. I work on the. Uh, I worked out in Vegas for several years, and I came out here to work on some of the casino ships. And it's really weird how our the people that are in office don't want casinos yet. We have more scratch offs. That you can imagine mm-hmm. lottery tickets. Which right. They went to the Fantasy Five now. Seven Big, biggest sucker bet in the world, absolutely, by the way. That lottery. Absolutely. And not for nothing. Um, I know you do promos for the Indian Reservation, but they bring in two hundred million a year, and the state sees not a dime. Right. Not a nickel. And and they bust in these blue hairs from all over. I mean, all over from Mikasuki. I mean, they they bust them in this eight, nine, ten buses, and yet they don't want gambling here. Right. They don't have a clue. I've been in the industry a long time. Go to Mississippi for a couple of days and see where no. and see what happened with that industry and see what, where it brought them and, and see if there's any more poverty, rapes, murders. How much more can you have in Miami? Well, right here in yesterday's Herald, the Goody Two Shoes Herald, that's always a, and, and the headline on these pages, by the way, the travel section, it says "Bet on it," that's as if like this is a big and, and the whole thing is presented as a big promotional piece. If you go, here's the phone numbers, here's their website, here's the Bull Ravage in Biloxi, uh, the seven hundred uh, million dollar Bull Ravage. Put the money here in South Florida. And it's just unbelievable it really the, the tremendous hype job they do. It's basically like, like they're saying it's okay for all of these other places. God forbid we should have anything so great here. And have something that's that, that, a beautiful casino or, or a 200 million, 200 million casino on some of these hotels that are absolutely pitiful and doing nothing. Right. And you can have something there and, and, and bring in two, 3,000 jobs. You know? And, and you know what? Vegas is a beautiful place. There's a lot of nice areas. And I'll tell you what, they're going to lose a lot of good people if they don't start getting their you know what out of there, you know where. Okay. Take care, Neil. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line casinos. Are we going to have them here? No. Are we going to live long enough? No. Ever? No. No. No chance. That's because somebody here decided a long time ago. It couldn't have been those bah- people in the Bahamas, could it? Uh-huh. They have something to do with it. People in the Bahamas. Uh huh. That know damn well that they'd all be out of business tomorrow if we had casino gambling here in Florida. There would be nobody with. A- I mean, even now, anybody that goes there, as far as I'm concerned, they're like a you know a couple of bricks short. I mean, what's the point? Why does anybody want to go over there and be treated like crap? But if we had casinos here, they could just shut those things right down, right to the... Uh, yeah, I'm on. You said it. So they might just have a little bit to do with it. And then, of course, our good friends at the Paramutuals, which I have some friends in that industry, but they're a little bit on the paranoid side. 
and they got nobody to blame but themselves over the years. They've like uh, blown away their clientele. They've done nothing to appeal to young people and all the old. They just keep dying off. Dying off. You look at the look at the attendance figures at the pair mutuals here. You have to have a Mount Palomar telescope to find them because they've done nothing other than the concerts that they have with those great artists. You know, <laughs> like Gary Puckett and the Union Gap <laughs> to bring out the young people. Man, five six seven oh five sixty pound five six. Then they have those salsa bands and those hoochie coochie acts out on Hialeah. And what they discovered, and they did, they did this years ago, they did the same crap. What they discovered is that the few hundred people that come out there for that stuff, they go out there in the back and they uh, watch that stuff. They never even go inside and watch the races, much less bet a dime on it. Real great promotional people. We got. Just like here at QAM, that's why this station fits in so nicely into this market. Do they know anything at all about promotion? No. Have they got a clue? No. But Sam's got a nice office in there, at least temporarily until we make it into another production studio in the year 2525, which is the same year that Dusk getting his new desk. Oh! Here's uh, Wes Kendall. Hello. Wes Kendall. Hello. Uh, yes. Neil. Yes, I am. Hey, how you doing, buddy? First okay. time, long time. All right. All right. Listen, three things. First time, first thing. I'm looking through um, the phone book. I can't find QAM to call you. Mm -hmm. So I call information. They give me a number, and I call. I'm sitting on hold, and it's uh, I have the back recording of Power 96. Power 96 comes on. This DJ knows your number right away. I guess a lot, a lot of people are calling your show from, from this wrong number they're giving. Mm -hmm. Number two, I work for American Airlines. So they are going to start uh, a nonstop flight to Vegas. Without going through uh, Dallas Fort Worth. When is that? I don't know. It's it's it's, it's in the talking stages. In I don't know how long stage, that will be. Yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to pass that on. And please, I have a Gilbert spy report. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he says, okay, I'm walking. I live on a Sunset and 152nd in West Kendall. Right. And I'm walking through a, a Winn Dixie, and I hear this guy saying hello. <laughs> Uh, to twine to, uh, you know, explaining all his stuff. And I said, man, this has to be Gilbert. So I go up to him. I said, listen, are you Gilbert? He says, oh, yes, correct. I am um, Gilbert. <laughs> and I, I mean, incredible. He was driving the Wagon Hut security crazy. Then I had about a half an hour to get him off of me. Yeah. And uh, anyway. Well, he's so, lonely, you know. He likes uh, to latch on anything uh, that's moving. <laughs> oh, man, incredible, incredible. He says George doesn't let him on. But anyway, uh, can I call somebody a douchebag? Go ahead, pal, and close it. All right. Johnny Miranda from Mundial Forwarding. You are a stingy douchebag. Thank you, Neil. Bye. Okay. So what was his point? Uh, 127 at 560 WQM. You know what? Well, pot's not good. It's great. Premium beer. You downed a red dog. You chugged a red wolf. Now open your mouth and wrap your lips around a red cock. Red Cock's foamy head will leave you breathless. Red Cock goes down easy, and it's never hard on your throat. So reach into that box and wrap your fingers around a long neck Red Cock. You can shake it and spray it all over. Remember, you can't beat a Red Cock. Just look for the label with the big red pecker on the front. All right. 132 at 560 WQM. Here's a fact. Another one allegedly from Club Cathode Ray, but you make a good point. It could be from anywhere. I have an idea who's sending these. It says, Sugar Ray is hot. I would suck that anytime is what it says. Did we find anything out about Sugar Ray or who he is, what it is, uh, where he'd be from? Uh, huh? I mean, inquiring minds want to know these things, okay? I mean, we have to try to get a little bit beyond uh, Ricky Martin for crying out loud. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello? Mobile in Miami. Yes, uh, Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know how you were talking about um, the other day how the brothers would call each other the N-word more than anyone else? Right. right? Um, not only do the brothers and, like, the youth in South of the white kids who call each other the N-word, and the brothers call the white kids, and the white kids call the brothers, and everybody's calling each other the N-word. And it's, that's just the way it is now. So, so white, right. kids, white kids are calling each other nigger now, too? Yeah, just as much. Just as much as the black kids do. Is the dark kids do? Know. Okay, thanks for the good news. There you go. Everybody's calling each other nigger. All right. All right, that's the way it works. I think if everybody called each other faggot, spick, huh, kike, then we can all get along. No, seriously, then it, I think it kind of like evens it out. Then we're all on the same playing field. I mean, if we're all niggers, then what's the problem? Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. How's it going, Neil? Pretty good. Um, 
about the casino situation. I heard. In fact, I just got a great new nickname for myself. How, how about Nigga Neil? <laughs> it's got a certain uh, alliteration to it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, about the casino situation. Yes, sir. Um, I heard a story about that. Lot and Charles didn't want um, casinos here because he owned the casino in the Bahamas, so he doesn't want to take away the... He owned the casino in the Bahamas? That's no, he did not. No, he did not. Whoever told you that must have been doing bad weed. Lawton Childs lost $12 as a child one time and was very much opposed to casino gambling. And so was Jeb Bush. And so was Governor Bob. And so was every politician that we ever had in this state just about. And so, well, good luck to you, sir. A nice try. 56705. Oh, and by the way, Lawton Childs, he, uh, how's he doing? Feeling real good? No. No, he ain't. Uh, 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's uh, Kendall. Hello. Hey, my nigga Neil. How you doing? All right. Hey, uh, not... how you doing, nigga? Call <laughs> Not to change the subject, Mr. Mr. Nigga. <laughs> not to change the subject, <laughs> Mr. Nigga. But uh, hey, I'm I'm doing some e trading research on the uh, on the internet. Yeah. And Are I'm... you one of those gay, uh, day traders? Well, I'm just a novice right now. Boy, I'm telling you, that's a scary. Uh, it's so tempting, you know. Oh yeah, I got Ooh, I got man. a good tip for you too. Get, I, I'm gonna get the facts on before I hang up. I'll Are you get... serious? You got a stock tip for oh, me? You did oh one. my God, I love you, sir. Hang on, this or I might hate you pretty soon. Hold on a minute. Um, I, I'm looking up. I'm, I've been tracking Republic Industries. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah, and it's just taking a huge dive. In right. fact, today I look it up, and they changed their symbol. Yeah, it's it's um uh, hey, yeah. Auto Nation now, right? Yeah, Auto Nation Inc. Um. But I'm doing hey, that. listen, if you were doing like they're doing, you'd probably want to change your name, too. I, I pulled up the insider trading info on Republic Industries. Right. And I don't know if anybody's aware of this. I won't say any names over the over the phone. I can substantiate it with this fax. There's an archbishop who's got uh, $46,000 worth of the stock. When he bought it, he, mm-hmm. he, 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 he bought it at 14 bucks a share. He's, he's lost his butt on it. And Well, what is it? About 12 now, right? Uh, so yeah, it's it's hovering between ten and twelve. Ten and twelve? Yeah, it was ten Friday, and it's up to twelve today. So that's yeah. where those day traders can get to make some money. If you just watch it go up and down, the mm-hmm. stock too. Right. Um. But then this is well, that priest is probably watching it go up and down right now. This other one, two hundred and sixty thousand shares for the Boys Club of Broward County. Now, where did they get the money to do that? The Boys Club has got stock in Auto Nation. Ten thousand shares. Oh, no. wait, maybe that was given as a donation by. Uh, Bling, 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 Bling. No, it says shareholder. Yeah. It says shareholder, but isn't that a public, uh, publicly funded, uh, charitable donation, charitable sure. organization? Sure. So where are they getting the money to do this? Now, is there some kind of underhanded stuff going? Well, if the boys' club purchases a. Uh, Get some kind of stock uh, interest in the company. Maybe they'll throw them all kinds of tickets to send these kids to games and stuff. Could that be? I have no idea. I never, well, I never really uh, spent yeah, a hell of a lot of time thinking about yeah, that. Yeah, well, well, you know, that's a, I, I was a member of that program as a child, and I'm kind of wondering if they're spending people's donation money on something that's really been taking a crap. Yeah. Let me fax this over. Please. And I'm uh, gonna here's write, the fax number. Let me make sure you get it right. Yeah, and I'm going <laughs> to write this. I'm going to write this symbol for this uh, this tip that I want to give you. Well, don't just write the symbol. Let me know the name of the company too. I don't want just some symbol. Okay, I'll write them both. Okay, three zero five. Okay. Three zero five six five zero. O one nine eight. O one nine eight. Thank you so much. Okay, my nigga, talk to you soon. Okay, thanks nigga. for the call. Okay, nigga caller. Okay, there's a nigga caller who says he got a big uh, tip on some nigga stock on a stock market. What's wrong? Now, let's see. I think, like I've always told you, people, if you say words over and over again, they have no meaning anymore. They become like destabilized. They become de denuded. Uh, denuded. I like that. Five six seven or oh, diluted and denuded. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty. On the AT&T wireless line. We have a call about Sugar Ray yet? No. No. They're all they're all still catching up with Ricky Martin here. He's old news, okay? He's Menudo. He's General Hospital. He's the Grammys. He's Hoochie Coochie, okay? Big deal with him. Even all those silly, silly little girls. Oh, he showed up anyway, even though I don't have any money for him. Yes, yeah, that's right. Good. I'll pay you uh, sometime when I feel like it. Hey, I'm a little short this week. I've only got those two checks in my pocket right now. What? Hey, listen, I got news for you. That's the only reason I show up here is for days like this, when I get that bonus check and the paycheck on the same day, and I look at them and I say, oh! yeah, the calls suck like usual, but God almighty, that's a pretty good substantial amount of cash in there, man. Here's a mobile in Hollywood. Hello? Mobile in Hollywood. Yeah, Neil. Yes, sir. Never been in Vegas before. People made reservations at the Riviera Hotel. They said they redid it. Do you know anything about it? 
uh, they redid it. I know that. I have I've never stayed there either. You never did. No. Good luck. Alrighty. Good location though. It is a good location. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Have a great time. Yep. There's a guy that's going to the. I mean, it's pretty hard to pick a place that's bad. Now you could have stayed at the old Aladdin before they tore, uh, tore it down, which they're going to have a new one next year, and that was a dump. I mean, that place, Jesus God. Oh man, even a clientele was old and musty in the Aladdin. But you know, it's like anything else in Vegas. It's one of those places where if you're going to compete, you can't stay old and musty very long because then you're going to be out of business. So they just keep tearing down and rebuilding and adding on. I mean, you talk about a place where the erections never stop. That's Vegas. I go out there average about twice a year, sometimes more. And every time you go out there, there is new construction going on. I've never, ever been there once when there weren't new places being built. It's, uh, you know, just like here. <laughs> 21 before uh, 2 at 560 WQM Hollywood. Wow, what a nice deck. Thanks. I love his deck. It's so big. I think mine's bigger. I've seen your deck. It's not bigger. When did he show you his deck? Over at his house. I was on his deck. You rode his deck? It was before your deck. Your deck is thicker. My deck was pretty firm then. You had a rock hard deck. It's softer now. When were you on his deck? One summer. For how long? Did you enjoy it? At the time. But my deck's bigger. What is it with you guys and your decks? How many decks have you been on? On? Does it matter? You just can't get enough deck, can you? Yours is the biggest and the best, okay? How much do you love my deck? Oh, let me kiss it. I'm going to kiss your deck. Oh, yeah. Kiss my deck, baby. And stroke it. Ah, rub my deck. This is really kinky. What? I've never seen a woman climb on another man's deck and rub his hard deck and stroke his firm deck. Does it turn you on? You never did that to my deck. I love his deck. Ooh, yeah, baby. Suck my deck. Mm, mm. Ooh, yeah, love my deck, deck sucker. Ouch. Oh. What? Splinters. Just swallow. Never. Spit it out. <laughs> Girls love big, hard decks on a man. Girls don't like tiny, rough decks. Big, thick decks. Available at Dick's Decks. See your yellow pages. So speaking of that, so uh, Sugar Ray is the name of the group. I thought that was that was he, but that's the name of the group. And Mark McGrath is the guy's name from L.A., according to Carlos, who ought to know these things. Didn't you think Sugar Ray was him? Yeah, I made that assumption. Right. Same thing with Alice Cooper. Oh, you're comparing Sugar well, Ray to Alice. Well, it was just on all weekend. The, uh, How about Alice Grantel? So anyway, somebody faxes me some uh, bad news. It says tickets are now on sale for L uh, Las Vegas-based National Airlines, and it's got a number here. Nonstop service to Los Angeles, Chicago, and New York. Is Miami on the list? No. No. See, originally, maybe they had plans to fly nonstop Miami, uh, Vegas, and then they took a look at this town, and they said, No. no. Forget it. No way, Jose. That's the way it goes. I mean, they just take a look here. Oh, gee, all those old, old, old people. Here's a real nice story, by the way. Somebody faxed. Police say mother uh, killed daughter eight years old with bat. I'll let you take a look at the picture in there if you can uh, see it from Orlando. A woman was charged yesterday with beating her eight-year-old daughter to death with a baseball bat. The mother indicated to the investigators the child was wetting her pants at the age of eight and that pissed her off. And she said, pissed off gets me fired up when I uh, hear, you know, hear that squirting sound. Squirt, squirt. And so I just uh, beat her to death. She ain't going to do it no more. Here's, um, what is that? Do I see, now, that's interesting. I've never seen that before in my life. You've got five next. and so How do you do that? I didn't think you could I do that. I didn't do it. I don't. Wow, that's fantastic. Here's Pompano. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. I also sent you a fax about an editorial this weekend about the guy and the, the woman being disrespected, the dead woman in the morgue. Yeah, right. Uh, did you read that? I, I, yeah, I got it. Ah, unbelievable. Yeah, that uh, her body was naked, and how dare he look at a naked body, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, uh, she was dead. Some, how, how do you look at a body in the morgue unless uh, it's Some women naked? don't want strangers to see them naked, especially right. when they're dead. Uh -huh. That's just um, hey, uh, I They could at least put a veil over her puss anyway. I caught the tail end of the call. He was talking about these stocks with the Boys and Girls Club. Right. Now, Boys and Girls Club is a privately funded organization. It's not a publicly funded. It's a privately funded non nonprofit. And I'm still waiting for that fax, by the way. I think that was a uh, what bogus. Exactly, what exactly was his point? Because I was listening. I didn't care. What, what was he saying? 
I don't know. He's trying to. I have no idea, really. I was so too excited waiting for the stock tip that never came in, so I I really don't know. He's trying to say there's something shady going on there. How come a a, a publicly funded organization like that is investing in stocks? All right. Well, it's not a publicly funded organization. What is it? It's private. It's a private nonprofit organization with a ton of fundraise. I mean, United Way does around 6% of the budget. But other than that, it's about a a $5.5 million budget, roughly, and it's a lot of just privately organized fundraisers, endowments. It's not a publicly funded organization. Okay. No, just a little so they're well endowed. Exactly. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Okay, the Voice Club of America are well endowed. Oh! For those who are wondering, don't let the church find out. Five, six, seven. I'll tell you one thing. That piece, you know, I realize that most of you aren't going to touch it with a ten-foot pool, but that piece on sixty minutes last night. These things, all these people want to say, well, uh, you know, you're attacking the church. It's got nothing to do with that. It's got to do with the truth, which so many people out there can't handle. And so they just put the blinders on, and they keep looking the other way, and they keep supporting and subsidizing all of these corrupt things. Here's uh, Palm Beach. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Is that you on that website? Here's uh, where we're going. Here's Miami. Hello. What's up, nigga? Yes, sir. What's going on, nigga? It's nigga Neil. Hey, Neil. How you doing, nigga caller? I just got a call uh, from a buddy of mine from out of town. I went to college with him. Yes, sir. He's uh, coming down next week, and he wanted to know if there's uh, any available Marlin tickets. (laughs) Ask him him what section he wants. (laughs) He could have the whole damn stadium. Oh, my huh? God. He could have the whole goddamn stadium all to himself. He could have a command performance. You think uh, Levi's going to win 20? Yeah, in his career, yes. I think it's a good bet he'll win 20 in his career. You're the best, Neil. Okay, have a great yeah. life, pal. Have a great life, nigga caller. It's the Nigga Neil Show on QAM. Don't forget that uh, great sports nigga Hank Goldberg will be here at 2. Old the Dolphin nigga Jim Maddich will be here at 6 o'clock. Then we got that nigga Marlin stuff at the 930. Not the Marlins and the uh, San Diego Padres. Any interest? I mean, why do I even ask that no. silly question about the Marlins? No. I mean, yeah, they won two out of three in uh, uh, Los Angeles, which tells you Dodgers blew a three nothing lead that first game. Yesterday they blew a four nothing lead. Does anybody care? No. Are we impressed? No. Eight and twenty three. Uh, no. No. It's very sad. Twelve minutes before two, I see good old uh, nigger Bob Boca Bryan in the other room there, with his niggardly uh, attitude. And nah, he really does. He's got a. Uh, whole niggardly attitude about life, which is uh, spelled a different way, by the way, for those of you up there in D.C. who don't know the difference. Hey, are you looking for fast, easy, reliable access to the Internet? The name you ought to think, you know, I haven't eaten anything all day, and I'm like uh, ready to pass out here. I'm swooning. Seriously. I'm dizzy. Maybe my blood sugar is like real low. I'm feeling mighty low right now. But I can wait. I can go get me like a king-size Snickers bar when I get out of here. Are you looking for fast, easy, reliable access to the Internet? The name you ought to be thinking about immediately is Mindspring. Wait a minute. One moment, please. See, well, you inspired me by having that thing on there about who's on next on the phone, and I'm trying to get on the goddamn thing here on it. Look at this. Man, oh, man. You want to know why it's taking me so long to get to that? Because we got all those damn dice things up there. Jesus.